Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto gains sword's power, Kai will be sealed inside Naruto. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. When we open the story we see here is in Siratobi speaking to a young baby boy who has spiky blonde hair and a powerful seal on his stomach that only a seal master would know what it was, he has decided to tell the boy a story because the council decided that the boy will be put into the orphanage the next day and who wouldn't want to spend one last night with the hero of his village. In the hidden whirlpool village, there was a powerful and honorable clan called Yuzumaki, there were three branches to this clan, main, dark, and the light branches. The way this clan became so powerful is because of six ninja who decided that they were not ready to die, they wished to stay on earth to make sure that the ones they loved did not come to harm, and also so their knowledge did not die with them, so they went and studied seals in order to make a way for them to protect their children, and so after years of becoming more powerful and intelligent. They found a way to seal their souls into swords, one was able to allow his sword to amplify emotions, and then another could cut through anything, even chakra, the third could generate so much heat, it could create any fire jutsu with just one swing, the fourth had the power of a different warmth, it could heal any wound just by being pressed against it. The fifth blade was able to generate wind so powerful, they said that swinging it caused a hurricane to form, then, the final one that could actually cut one's soul, without doing any physical damage, but these blades were well guarded, and only those willing to seal themselves within the blade when they died, could not touch them, and even then, you had to have been of Yuzumaki blood. Or you would not have been able to remove the blade from the sheath, for the blades would only obey the true Uzumaki blood, and even when you have that blood, would you want to spend the rest of your afterlife sealed within a sword, unable to be united with the people you miss. But, years ago, a great evil befell the village, and the clan, a ninja seeking the weapons, was mad enough to destroy the village and everything in it, but there was one woman who managed to escape, and she was left alone, until one day when a Junin and his Genin team came across her while in the woods and offered her a home, a place to rebuild her clan, which she reluctantly agreed to. Her name was Kashina Yuzumaki, and she gave her name to you in hopes of bringing back the power and the honor of the clan, the Red Death of Konoha, saw the potential to bring honor to her family name and you, Naruto Yuzumaki. As the story ended we find ourselves in a room with what seemed to be a three-year-old boy with blonde spiky hair, sitting in a chair across from the old third Hokage, as he finished telling him of his favorite story, for it was how he as an orphan was given a family name. Unknown to Naruto, Saratobi was telling him this story not for the reason of telling Naruto of how he got his name from a woman who wanted him to bring honor to her family, but because he wanted to tell Naruto of how his mother came to the village and indirectly give him a mother. Every month, after the orphanage kicked him out, which was five months ago, the Hokage came over and told Naruto about the wonderful things Kashina Yuzumaki did, as well as some of her less than grand tales, the later to show she was still a human with a heart, and sometimes. He told him about how Kashina would end up dating the fourth Hokage a few times, and then how he would make a fool of himself and make her laugh. But whenever Naruto asked about his real parents, he got the same answer, they were both brave, strong and loved him, and that his mother was talking about how she was going to teach him this and that, and even how his father fainted when he was told. But when asked about their names he would just tell him that if he was to talk about that out in the open, then someone might hear and inform the wrong people, and then Naruto would be in serious danger of threats he cannot stop, so Naruto went about looking to Kashina and the Uzumaki clan as a role model, he even got a picture of Kashina as a birthday present one year from the old man which he kept hidden in a loose floorboard under his bed so no one could find it and whenever he needed a mother's warmth, he just got the picture and gave it a hug, then hid it again so no one could take it from him. The night of his third birthday, as Naruto slept, he was kidnapped and as he was taken away from the village, he met someone that would change his life. Number dollar percent and plus the fox plus and percent dollar number. As Naruto was being roughly dragged over rocks and sticks, in which all he saw when they stopped were a group of guys, there were a few with weird eyes, some had red eyes with two or three black comas in them, and others were white with veins popping out of them, well there were others as well that he did not see any outstanding features on. Some of the villagers decided to attack the demon boy, and so they decided to go and ask some of the clan members of the powerful clan's foe help, unfortunately, the Nara said it was too troublesome to hate the boy, the Yamanaka, and the Akamichi said they had full faith in the fourth sealing ability, while the Aburam said it was illogical to judge him now. Although they did get some Hayuga and some Ichihas to help them out, they still were going to beat the shit out of him. So as they got to a clearing, they started. They kicked him while he was crying on the ground, and they even threw weapons at him, some even began using jutsu and sealing his tenketsu, but unknown to them, someone was going to meet the demon boy because of them, and he wasn't going to sugarcoat anything. Number dollar percent and plus Naruto's, Mindscape plus and percent dollar number. 
Where am I? You are within your subconscious. Who are you then? Naruto opened his eyes to see a giant fox with nine tails while Kai Ubi actually felt pride in being able to leave the boy speechless, your one big kitty face fault. I am a fox, not a cat. Oh, so did you want something? I want to explain what I am doing here, first off I am the mighty demon guardian. Secondly, I was supposed to be sealed into the air of the main Yuzumaki branch by Kashina Yuzumaki, considering it would have been her son, but instead, I was sealed into you, the one who was given her name, and without the blades of wind and soul, I cannot test if you are the rightful Yuzumaki. So I am stuck believing that old man who told you the story, although I am surprised he knew that much, the clan story isn't well known anymore. Digi said he feels knowledge is power. Correct, and since I am sealed in you, I shall believe the old fool and aid you in the learning and teach you of seals, so you may one day create a blade and seal your soul into it, so you can recreate the Uzumaki clan. Naruto looked shocked but asked one simple question, who are you again? I am the mighty Kai Ubi, guardian demon of the Uzumaki main branch. What about the other Biju? Are they guardians as well? Yes, although they were either stolen from their respective clan or improperly sealed, or their clan has been destroyed. So, what you're saying is that all the Biju are not actually demon. Yes, when most humans see power, they try to claim it for themselves, and in the end, they destroy everything. Naruto looked at the fox and asked what about the people beating me. They have been at it for an hour now, and I have forced you into unconsciousness to keep you from feeling it. All the Kaiubi got was an okay, and that was it, as he curled up in a corner and waited. Number dollar percent and plus outside plus and percent dollar number. The mob was finishing up, hopefully ending the life of the demon, but as they were about finish up something really bad happened. What the fuck do you think you are doing? As the mob turned around they knew they were screwed, Hiyashi and Fugaku were looking at them with Hinata hiding behind her father's leg with tear-filled eyes, looking at the beaten form of Naruto. Hiyashi had mixed feelings right now, he really didn't want to deal with the punishment from the Hokage for his clansmen doing this. Hiyashi I hope you know the penalty for this. Yugaku had nothing to stop him from speaking his mind, considering he had no little girl to worry over, you do realize if the Hokage caught you, we would be on the receiving end of a shitload more trouble than we already are right. This boy is under his protection retarded bastards. The Ashi looked at Yugaku, you do realize he will expect them to be punished right. They will be. Was all he got as Yugaku activated his Sharingan, he Ashi activated the cage bird seal, the branch members all screamed in pain as Yugaku went and knocked his clansmen out. The Ashi I assume they are going to be arrested. Yugaku of course. Hinata is he going to be okay? She was still hiding behind her father still looking at the bloody boy as Yugaku signaled for some people to come and arrest the people that were unconscious as he checked the boy. Yugaku he is alive, maybe you should take him home and make sure he gets treated for his injuries. Yugaku loves to piss off Yashi, and he knew if he refused to take the boy his daughter would see him as heartless and evil, although the village would if he did, then again, Hinata sees a little boy her age who is beaten and bloodied for no reason, so with that Yashi went and picked up the boy and walked with Hinata back to the estate, while Fugaku and some of his clansmen arrested the mob. As Yashi was walking home with Hinata, he was glared at for carrying the boy, which got worse when the boy woke up him a dead yet. He sounded broken, like he was wanting it to be true, he ashi almost felt like feeling bad, although he knew things such as the level the fourth was at with sealing, considering they were teammates, and he trusted him with his life, which happened several times, he had to use an excuse to get the council to not get pissed, he so wished his daughter didn't see the boy, then this would be easier. Considering he wouldn't have to explain to a boy who most likely doesn't trust a whole lot of people, he was going to let him sleep in his house for the night. Well when you were being hurt, me and Fugaku went and stopped the people responsible and saved your life, and seeing as our clansmen were in that mob, Fugaku has arrested them, well I shall be kind enough to allow you to rest at my home till you feel better. And with that Naruto just fell asleep in his arms to try and regain his strength and to escape being questioned and possibly hit. Number dollar percent and plus and plus and percent dollar number. The Ashi is a man of power, so when he was called for an emergency meeting from Thecklin Council, he was prepared. Council member 1 is there a reason for you to be allowing the demon vessel to sleep here? The Ashi this afternoon I decided to go for a walk with Hinata to spend time with my daughter on her birthday and maybe get her something, as we were walking we ran into Fugaku Ichiha and as we were about to pass him right by, but both me and Fugaku heard a cry and we rushed to see what was happening, we saw the boy getting brutally beaten by a mob with some Ichiha as well as Hayuga in it. So me and Fugaku handled it, my daughter saw the condition of the boy and was worried, and because of the fact that we are not allowed to inform the children about what dwells in the boy, I had no choice but to bring him here when Fugaku advised it when he and the other Ichihas were gathering up the mob, and also with the healing abilities of his tenity would obviously survive. 
and if he told the hookage about this then he would be at our necks about it, losing our political standing, considering that we left a three-year boy to be beaten by a mob, that is my reasoning for my actions, that and it is only for a night, then I shall go to the hookage to see about where he should be put. As he ashi finished his statement he went to check his daughter and wife who were actually taking care of the boy, as he found out they were taking care of him in Hinata's room, which ended by having Hinata join him and Harumi in their room for the night. At night, when a person entered through the window of Hinata's room and without second thought grabbed the light girl, which seemed lighter than he thought, malnutrition and small good when you need a lift, bad when being kidnapped, and with his package, he tried to get out, but as he was escaping, he ran into a little problem. The Ashi was having a hard time staying asleep with his daughter and wife, considering he didn't know if the boy would break from the beating and release the demon, either by accident or purpose, he didn't know, but did know that he couldn't take it on, period. He did worry and couldn't get to sleep because he could still sense that damn evil chakra on the move. On the move. His eyes were open and he was out the window following it within seconds, he could always sense the evil chakra when he was close to the boy, it was low, but there, and now it was moving in the middle of the night, and he didn't trust it, in the morning he would have escorted him to the Hokage Tower and handed him over to Suratobi then leave and be done with it. But if the boy was moving in his home he would make sure he didn't attack anyone. Imagine his surprise when he found him being kidnapped, landing in front of the kidnapper and glared, the kidnapper grabbed the sack he had and reached in grabbing the arm of the clan head's daughter, hoping to use her as a hostage, imagine his surprise when he pulled out a blonde boy. The ashy looked at the boy and then at the kidnapper, then at the boy, and blinked. The kidnapper looked at the boy in shock how the fucking hell did I get him mixed up with the girl, I was certain I went through the right window. The ashy he actually stayed in her room tonight, for reasons you have no need of knowing. You let your three-year-old daughter sleep with boys. I thought dads didn't even let their 17-year-old daughters sleep with boys, damn. The ashy glared daggers at the man, screw tradition, he bolted at the man and socked him one right in the nose grabbing Naruto, while the man was rolling on the ground holding his nose screaming his head off. What the fuck he ashy looked at Naruto shocked do I look like a sack of potatoes dude. I have legs. The ashy talk about gratitude he just let go of Naruto letting him drop to the ground unceremoniously which he picked himself up off the ground. Naruto who is he? The ashy he tried to kidnap you, but I stopped him Naruto looked at the man before him and started to shed a tear, he actually saved him twice. The ashy saw the tear and almost asked about it before he was almost bowled over by a crying Naruto into a hug, well Naruto cried himself to sleep in a surprised he ashy's arms, he ashy picked Naruto up and looked at the man who was trying to stop himself from losing blood, never assume a father would give his daughter up to anyone so easily, or so young, idiot. But that he ashy knocked the dude out with a nicely aimed kick to the head and he surged his chakra to alert the hokage. As Siratobi arrived he immediately was on edge as he saw an unconscious man and he ashy with a sleeping Naruto, so he told an Anbu to check the man that was out cold and take him to Anbu headquarters to be interrogated in the morning. Then asked he ashy to report to him in the morning so he could return to bed and was about to retrieve Naruto when he ashy informed the hokage about the arrangements he made tonight for Naruto and the reasons which gave the hokage another reason to have he ashy report to him in the morning as well as set up a meeting with Fugaku. And so he ashy put Naruto back in his daughter's room as he returned to his room, also wondering why the boy chose to wake up at that point in time and not before then, when the kidnapper for starters grabbed him roughly from bed, then again when he whipped the boy from the sack, then when he looked at his wife cuddling with his three-year-old daughter he couldn't help but smile. He laid down next to his little family and remembered the first time Hinata slept in her own room and got scarred, then ran to him and Harumi's room and cried till his wife told her to climb into bed with him, he smiled a warm smile for the little girl and the lovely woman that were his family, and he fell asleep with his arm over his family protectively. Naruto's mind skated before and during the kidnapping. Naruto sat there listening to the fox as he describes the basics of seals and asked questions every now and then to see if he understood, although it was a bit easier considering he was dumbing it down a bit for the kid and explained using diagrams, yay diagrams. Naruto was actually learning, although he did find the little chibi fox drawings that the Kaiubi used for his diagrams funny, think Krukia's diagrams, but with foxes not bunnies. And as they were doing this the fox discovered that the boy was moving and so decided to tell him to go and figure out what's happening, then when the boy decided to go do what he was told he found himself being carried by the same man from earlier and threw a fit but upon being informed about what happened he just couldn't hold it in. He hugged his hero and cried himself to sleep while he was safe from being hurt. The next morning. Naruto woke up in an unknown bed and an unknown room which smelled of lavenders and when he opened his eyes he was met by pale lavenders looking back at him and out of impulse he smiled brightly, making the girl looking at him blush and run to tell her father that he woke up like a good girl she that she was, but as she left so did the lavender smell, he assumed that it was her shampoo. Oh well. 
As Naruto was walking out the door he was confronted by the man who saved him, along with a mini-me hello person who saved my life twice and his mini-me. Itachi almost laughed at his son's red face, Niji was always looked at as the prodigy of the branch family, but he was just called a mini-me by some no-named kid, how do you get a mini-me? That did it, Niji jumped the boy as what happened next would be laughed at. Naruto rolled back as Niji lunged forward and kicked him in the stomach, sending him through the wall, which wasn't a very big feat, considering the building was traditional Japanese and the walls were very thin. I wonder why I make Niji get hurt in my fictions. Oh well, as Niji stood to attack again, his father interrupted. My name is Hisashi, and if you mean the man who saved you looks like me, that would be my twin brother Hiashi, and this here is my son Niji, not a mini-me. Naruto chuckled and rubbed the back of his head with a sheepish grin. Oops and so, Naruto was led to the breakfast area, where he met with a lavender girl and the guy who saved him, with another woman so he decided to be polite Nad introduce himself hi, my name is Nar. He stopped mid-sentence as he started sniffing the air, and he followed the scent, at first they thought he was smelling the food, but then he walked to the woman, why do you smell like two different people? He ashy looked at him with a quirked eyebrow. What do you mean boy? Hiashi was a reasonable man, but cheating on him was a bit more than he can handle, assuming he was right about the fox giving the boy a super sniffer, but if the boy was fucking with him, he would believe his wife over anything this boy says against her and kill him. She smells a bit different around her tummy. Now people were interested, considering it's hard to tell what a person actually smells like without getting close, and even then you would have to be an Inazuka to tell if they were cheating on someone, but seeing as his wife has been with him every night, and even that special night about a week ago, he knew he still had her heart. Barumi knew she was feeling ill for the last couple days, and was actually gonna go see a doctor about it, considering she didn't do much but sleep with her husband that one time a few weeks ago, when they were both wanting to do something special for the other, and it was special, but now she was thinking it gave them something more special, and she was now even more curious Hiashi kun I am gonna go get something checked out, okay? Hiashi could only nod, considering he was curious now as well. So after his wife left he asked what did you smell Naruto? Well, she had a second scent coming from her tummy, like it was a bit of you and her, but it didn't smell like either of you. The Zashi actually got curious one day and went to an Inuzuka and asked how they knew if someone was pregnant by smell, and he just heard it again he ashi, I think she was pregnant. No was all his ashi got, which then he went along to explain how the Inuzukas were able to tell if someone was pregnant, which resulted in he ashi denying it again, then accusing Naruto for bringing this shit up, which resulted in Naruto joining the argument to defend himself, which impressed Niji and Hinata when he actually proved he ashi wrong, and left his ashi speechless and he ashi flabbergasted. While they argued Harumi actually went to Hana Inuzuka to get her to answer the question, which she told her the brat was right, she was pregnant, and that she also should be about a week into it, considering how hard it was to smell, which also made her run home to tell her husband, too bad when she got there, she saw a childish argument between Hiashi and a three-year-old. Which seemed childish, but the branch family members and her daughter, and even a few main branch family members we were actually finding it entertaining Hiashi kun Hearing his wife he realized she was back and decided to win this argument Harumi, will you please explain what this boy smelled. I'm pregnant he ashes eyes widened and jaw fell. See, I told you I could smell someone in her. And with that Naruto stuck his tongue out at the man as he ashi dropped unconscious, leaving Naruto wide-eyed and throwing his hands up screaming I didn't do it. Which prompted his ashi to laugh out loud as hard as possible, which was a chain reaction in Niji, Hinata and Harumi laughing with him, and the rest of the Hayuga smirking, for real Hayuga didn't laugh or giggle, they were above that, although watching one of the strongest men in the village get bettered by a three-year-old and then faint was very funny. Especially when the three-year-old almost thought he did it, which indirectly he did, but he didn't know that. After he ashi fainted and they couldn't budge him, they went and got something to eat. Hiashi Hayuga woke up about two hours later, and after checking the time he went and got Naruto and went to the Hokage's office, telling them to have something for him to eat when he got back. Hokage's office. Tsuritobi well, so what happened when Naruto was attacked by the mob, Hiashi explained what he knew while Naruto filled in what he couldn't, then Hiashi had to explain why Naruto was kidnapped, and after which Hiashi was allowed to leave, and Naruto stayed and decided to tell his Jiji about the Kaiubi. Naruto Jiji, Kaiubi was a Gordian for the Yuzumaki family. His jaw dropped at the bluntness of that statement what? He told me that he was gonna teach me how to make seals so I can restart the Yuzumaki family. So you're telling me that you know about the fox and that he is gonna train you? What about attacking the village? Why did he do that? He said that some white guy with yellow eyes stabbed him with a blade soaked in a powerful poison, and he went delusional while he was on his way here to be sealed within the rightful heir of the Yuzumaki by Kishina Yuzumaki, the last of the Yuzumaki and rightful clan head. 
Tsuritobi placed a silence barrier up and walked over to the picture of the fourth and pulled it down as he opened the safe in there and pulled out five scrolls, looked at them, and placed the three blue ones back in the safe and handed Naruto the two red ones while closing the safe and hiding it again. Those are your mother's scrolls holding her last words for you and a scroll of her techniques, although you might not need them because of the Kaiubi, but the other three in there are for when you reach 16 alright. Naruto nodded and looked at the scroll with a blood seal on it and looked back at the old man you are Kashina's son. The reason I told you differently is because I thought I could stop the threats that are in the walls of Konoha, but the threats of both your mother and father would come and try to kill you if they found out about you. Your mother is wanted by the Mist Village because she went against all seven swordsmen of the Mist and won, although not perfectly, but her mission succeeded because she fought them all off and held them there, while our forces were coming to the town she protected, and when our forces got there, she was in bad shape but would come out unharmed. Days later she got a message offering her to join the swordsmen of the Mist, and she just put it up without sending a reply. What about my father? I just told you, you'll find out when you become 16, but I will tell you, he was wanted dead by all of Kumo for taking down 80% of its forces single-handed, well good luck with those scrolls Naruto. Naruto opened one of them as the Hokage regretted when he did why is she saying my father will be sealing the Kaiubi in me. Damn it. Tsuritobi took the scroll and read it, the first paragraph was all about how no matter what she would always love him and be proud no matter what path he chose, then it had a paragraph filled with regret, because his father was gonna seal the Kaiubi in him damn it, and so went and grabbed the other three scrolls from the vault and handed them to him okay. Now there are no more scrolls in there meaning I can close it now right? As Naruto nodded and finished reading the scroll which was just the story Saratobi told him with very little changes, so as Saratobi was about to bend down to put the painting back up, Naruto had to ask. Gigi? What about the other two guardians? Saratobi rose an eyebrow and asked Kaiubi isn't the only one. Kaiubi says that the dark dragon Kurigari and the sun ape Yakukij are both sealed within their respective statues within the underground caverns at the Whirlpool village, maybe when I become a ninja I can look for them and put them with the Kaiubi. Tsuritobi thought about it you may look for information, but I cannot authorize looking for them directly, we need you to stay protected and safe, for if what you say is true then you are a great asset for Konoha. Naruto looked at one of his father's scroll as the Hokage went to put the painting back up, but after he had it all set up he was informed something else did you know there was a secret compartment in the back of that safe that had a few things for me. Tsuritobi started twitching, so he pulled the painting down and opened the safe again and checked it and found a blood seal. Tsuritobi pricked Naruto's finger and got some blood, then went and opened the compartment and got a three-pronged kunai, two leaf headbands, one being Minato's the other being Kishina's, Kishina's whirlpool headband, and last was two wallets, filled with cash and a note, explaining that they wanted Naruto to have cash on hand without having to deal with a bank. Would any intelligent Jinchuriki leave any amount of money at a bank? Tsuritobi actually agreed, so he handed the stuff to Naruto. The sum what was in the letters, first from his mother was about her history and the history of her clan, the second was her ken and tojutsu style and her ninjutsu. Then the first from his father was of him apologizing about everything, three times, then telling him about his history and explaining about how he didn't know much about his family, then also explained pervy sage to him and how he was his godfather, then the second one was about his jutsu and tojutsu and lack of any jinjutsu, which consisted of him whining about his lack of control. At least it seemed that way to Naruto, the third was about seals, as well as about the scroll of sealing, which he found out was his. Tsuritobi started to sweat as Naruto smirk one of those I know I can kill you but I'm gonna fuck with you first smirk so oh shit, I made a monster. Hey Oji san, can I go home yet? I wanna get to learning seals. Alright, remember though as he speaks he grabs a scroll and seals the scrolls of Naruto's into it, then he helps Naruto make a blood seal and gives it to him make sure this stays out of the hands of others, alright. Yes Oji san as Naruto gets to the door, he disables the silent jutsu surprising Tsuritobi, and in return for helping me, I will make a special seal for you to help with the paperwork. As Naruto leaves the room and heads home Tsuritobi just thinks well a good fire jutsu would deal with the damn shit, maybe if it was an accident. Naruto was up late as he was working on a leather glove, sewing seals into it. A job, now add the ejection seal there and a focus seal right there next to it. With the help of Kai Ubi. Alright, it's finished, you think you will forgive me for calling him a mini-me now? Definitely. And with it finished he went to sleep wondering how his friend would like his new gloves. It had been four months, and Kaiubi decided it was time for Naruto to start making seal weapons, which he was inspired to make because of the three-pronged kunai, and now he made his first one. Naruto was rushing to the Hayuga estate and found Niji in back training with Hinata watching him from the sidelines, breathing hard, probably from training, and since Niji was hardly breathing hard, he decided to ask him for help. Hey Niji. 
When he turned to look he decided to glare and nod can you try this glove out to see if the seals on it work. Niji became curious and nodded taking the gloves and listened alright, now you focus chakra into the seals on the palm as Niji did this, he saw a blue glow focus into his palm, almost like it was charging for an attack, then you release it and watch, and as he did it shocked everyone. As he ashy heard a blast, like an explosion tag going off he and his wife ran to see what happened, when they got to the training ground they saw Naruto and Hinata cowering behind Niji, while Niji poked a glove with a stick, they all looked scared, and he ashy looked at the tree that used to be whole, but now looked like someone blasted a hole through it with something. Which was mimicked by the next three trees after that one, and so he had to ask what happened. Naruto spoke Niji shot a hole through a tree with the scary glove I gave him. Niji I only used enough to block one Tenketsu though. Naruto pulled the other glove from his pocket and threw it next to the other glove and hid behind Niji again, he ashy looked shocked you are learning seals. Naruto nodded. Those were from me to Niji so he would forgive me for calling him Minimi. The ashy almost deadpanned, Naruto gave a lethal weapon of mass destruction to a branch house member, one thought went through his mind, oh shit Naruto grabbed Niji's hand and pricked his finger, spilling his blood on the two gloves, there now no one else can use them, besides maybe your kids, but that's because they have half of your DNA in them, so they won't be used for evil. Niji gave Naruto a weird look and accepted the gloves, the main reason. Would you want to refuse a gift from someone who just gave you something that put a hole through four trees? I didn't think so. He might make something bigger. Also, who wouldn't take them? Thank you, Naruto s before he could finish he was hugged by the blonde boy kun he finished with a warm smile while returning the hug, he was after all a little boy who just wanted a hug, and he did just give Niji a tool to make himself feared by a lot of the main branch members, seeing as how they all looked scared and were practically hiding behind his ashi and he ashi, besides. He didn't mind fully what he called him, his dream was now closer with the gloves, he could become greater than the main family, and surpass them, and prove he could be better than all of them, even though he was from the branch family, he would be the best Hyuga throughout both main and branch. You're welcome, Nai San Naruto smiled a large grin after getting off him, he actually always wanted a little sibling, though he didn't want to bother his father about it, since his mother was dead, even though Hinata called him Nai San, but he was basically her servant, but Naruto had no ties to the Hyuga at all, he didn't even have to acknowledge he existed, but he saw him as a brother. And it actually brightened his mood. So he played it cool and turned to the side and gave him a sideways glance alright, Oda too, I will keep them from getting to anyone, and with that he went to mull over what happened, his ashi and he ashi were smiling that Niji was becoming more open with someone, although the boy did just get a one of a kind weapon that will leave anything in its wake dead or dying, they shivered. They were scared of what the blonde was capable of and what Niji would do with them gloves that turned the Jaiwiken into a ranged style, which was normally the weakness that was solved by the Katen, but now getting too far from Niji ended up with dodging his death blasts and getting close involved avoiding the normally unstoppable normal Jaiwiken, which lead to one simple word fuck. Naruto has been spending time with Niji and Hinata more often and then after about six months he made something new and just had to show the old man, which led him to running into the Hokage Tower, sneaking past the secretary and bursting into the Okage's office, shouting hey. Jiji, I made a new seal. What he didn't expect was to run in on him while he was talking to the clan heads about some important matters that the writer doesn't know about, but is guessing they were having a meeting over the main clans in Kanoha and making sure everything is still in order, assuming they have meetings for things like those. I don't know, go with it. The ashy almost gulped, as Saratobi sighed Naruto, I am in the middle of a meeting, do you mind waiting outside? The ashy actually, considering his last seal put a hole straight through four trees, I think we should hear him out, after all, sealing is a rare trait to enter, we might actually enjoy sitting in on this meeting, besides, the boy isn't very patient. Tsuritobi looked shocked and almost scared how did you make a seal like that? Naruto well I put three seals on the gloves they waited for more, but he just pulled out a glove with seals on it, making Hiashi jump back, surprising everyone, and caused Tsum to snicker. What? Afraid of gloves? This caused several snickers throughout the room, though his reply did shut them up. His last glove with seals blasted a hole through three trees, when Niji said he only put enough chakra to seal one Tenketsu, everyone slowly backed away from the glove, which Naruto put on his right hand and bit his left thumb, then smeared the blood on the back of the glove. That glove was made of three seals, the outer two were chakra walls one on the outside of the palm and the other inside palm, these seals have to have chakra stored in them in order to work, but they could even block out the Byakugan, if what Niji Nai Sen said is true, but the one one the inside has a chakra storage seal around it, depending on the amount of chakra put into it. 
the glove will become unusable till the chakra stored in it is used up, which means you have to use the Jayuakin without using your chakra to expel the access, therefore while you shove chakra out your hands, the seals will slowly drain the chakra out through your attacks, but the wall seal on the outside expels all the chakra the moment you stop charging chakra into it. And while the chakra storage seal that is in between the two wall seals stores chakra, it begins to condense, and when you stop channeling chakra, the condensed chakra, which I accidentally overpowered, but corrected when I gave Hina-chan a pair and Niji a second pair, so he could practice without destroying everything, although I did give Hina-chan a pair like Niji Ni-chan's first pair. But as the outer wall seal releases the energy stored in it, the extra burst of chakra launches the condensed chakra away from you, while the stored chakra from the inner wall seal protects your hand. But this one is different, I don't really know how to explain it, but I used some seals from a book and mixed and matched them till I made a glove that can write your name. All of the clan heads were wide-eyed, and the only one to say anything was Shikaku holy shit, every clan head just nodded and wondered if he actually made a glove that could write his name, and when he placed his blood on the back and placed his hand on a blank piece of paper he brought with him, the clan heads and Hokage sensed him focusing chakra, his name and blood was written on the paper. Perfectly, which then caused the blood on the glove to disappear. Incredible Saratobi looked at the glove, but how would you keep others from using it to fake a document? Naruto smear your blood on the seal old man Suratobi did as told and smeared his blood, then Naruto did the same, getting a strange purple color instead of red the seal on the front is an order seal, anything that passes through will become your name, no matter what. But, even if you manage to get past to that, the filter seal that mixes your blood and chakra will catch them, when your blood mixes with your chakra, it stays red, but if your blood mixes with another person's chakra, the chakra becomes bruised, I should also say that I thought of that thanks to Niji Nisan, who explained about how chakra shows when foreign chakra enters your system, also. If you're dead, you can't generate chakra, so if a paper comes up with your name in purple, we know someone murdered you or stole your hand. This boy, no, this genius, just made signing paperwork easy, now all he had to do was put a bit of blood on the back of his hand and press it to the paper and it would sign itself, Suratobi shed tears and hugged the little boy and kissed his head, this action however confused the three almost four year old. I didn't know that you were in a meeting with Hiyashi-sama and Fugaku-sama, though it does save me the trouble of finding them, I made one for them because they saved me from that mob last year and I made you one because you're my Jai-san. Shibi, Shino's dad, if I have the wrong name please tell me, Naruto-sama. Naruto was confused about that, but looked anyways when he was addressed by the clan head, would I be able to purchase one of your gloves? And now he was more confused huh? Assume you know what, maybe I should buy one too. Naruto oh, that's what purchase means, he is for, what do you expect? Shibi well, how about I give you 5000 yen I think that is 50 bucks, does it sound reasonable to you? Naruto just nodded, as Naruto turned around he was handed 5000 yen from everyone who didn't get a glove, well the ones who did fondle fears, making Naruto sweat drop, but he took the money and asked for their addresses, which they willingly gave him. As he went and got more right gloves from the store with the bun girl and her father who didn't overcharge him, although he did ask that he restrain from playing with the shiny long silver things with handles, swords if you couldn't guess, which the bun girl calling them sharp and pretty, but they were out of her reach, that was until Naruto gave her a lift and got one. But he stopped them from playing with it. Damn. Naruto stayed focused on the task of making the five other clan heads the gloves they paid for, which took him a full week to finish, and then another full week looking for the clan estates, he is only four, cut him some slack, and then started on his next project, which was a special seal tattooed to his arms right at the shoulders, with seals connecting to the Shiki Fuin seal. The seals were super jukied wall seals that would be able to stop the progression of the Kyubi's chakra, allowing him to cover his arms in it and use the power to full force, think when he goes four tails against Arachimaru and Shippuden, those arms, and he knew nothing could stop him, but he also added a gateway seal to the Shaiki Fuin. Allowing the Kaiubi to take a physical form outside the seal, though he was not able to get very far from Naruto, he could at least stretch his legs and get out of the damn sewer, he could even help Naruto fight and train, though when word got out, then they would run away from him, all this took him a total of 5 years, in which time, Hinata's mother died of an illness. But with his ashi there he was able to stay relatively the same, though he became determined to see that Hinata and Hanabi, and even Niji, get a checkup on their physical health every four months, and also start to give them a bit stricter training methods, but thanks to his ashi, he never had to resort to being cold or playing favorites. Because with a brother who had to deal with the same thing there to aid you in your time of need and give you advice, you can come back with a steady outlook.
which leads to Naruto and Hinata joining the academy and meeting some interesting people. Although he didn't make any new seals for his Jai-san, he was positive the Hokage was happy with the first one, considering since now he didn't have to write his name out all the way, which seems to be a bitch in Japan, due to having to draw the complex characters for it and saving him time. Also allowing him to finish quicker and actually get a well-deserved break, but Naruto also had the Kaiubi adding special seals to his back, then charged them with his chakra, which in turn, allowed him to. Naruto was waiting for Kaiubi to finish the seal on his chest. The Kaiubi's human form was very handsome, he was chiseled to perfection as the ladies say, he had the muscular athlete look going on, although he did have the scary 8-pack that most men work for, but is just out of reach to them. Maybe besides Mike Guy, but then again he was insane. But he was getting impatient, considering he was hyper and was excited about the academy, adding in the mix by testing a new seal, he was a bit over-enthusiastic, which was not needed when the Kaiubi told him to add chakra to the seal on his chest that he just put there, and he erupted into a bright light, which was partly supposed to happen. Naruto and Kaiubi were trying to make a seal that would create a hinge that the Byakugan and the Sharingan could not see through, too bad what the got was a shirtless blonde girl in orange pants, Naruto's sexy jutsu form, did it work. I will be maybe too well, I smell you as a female instead of a male now. We turned me into a chick. We have to figure out how to turn you back, we need to reverse the hinge seal and then apply it to you and activate it. Where is the rest of the seal ink? That was the last of it. I will be explained the whole birds and the bees to him a while ago when he started having feelings for Hinata, so he wasn't stupid about it. Naruto became pissed off, he or she needed to reverse the seal as soon as possible damn hinge seal. At the H I G U R A S H I I have seen this name used for Tenten so if I'm wrong tell me, shop. What do you mean you don't have any of the seal ink? Naruto was in a bind, he or she was trying to get the special ink that soaks chakra in order to make a seal function properly and allow him to reverse the seal he placed on himself, why did he have to use the ink that couldn't be removed from the body? Tenten's father why not use Kai? Or remove it yourself? Naruto because with the ink I used, it is like getting a tattoo, only it's able to store chakra itself, so until I am able to edit it, I am stuck like this. I am sorry. I will have more by the end of the week, so come by then, alright. Naruto I have to be a girl for a full week. And with a nod from the man he just turns around and walks to school and ends up shedding a tear, how am I gonna explain this? On the way to academy Naruto got some confused looks as he was a small 7-year-old girl with blonde hair and was never seen before when he was also wearing the same clothes the demon child wore, but when he got to the academy he was looked at differently. The academy. Sasuke saw a girl enter the room and wondered who it was, he was even willing to admit she was beautiful, hair that made her look like she had a halo and the pale skin of an angel, he was in love. Hiba, being the ladies' man he was always had to get with every girl he could, even after what happened with Naruto and Hinata flashback. The first day of the academy was going to be fun for Kiba, and he knew he was gonna be drilled over by all the girls, so when he saw a beautiful girl with pale eyes and dark hair, he had to get her to notice her crush on him, hey there, I'm Kiba, and I noticed you were in love with me. Oh way idiot Kiba just now seemed to notice a blonde that was with his new girlfriend. Out of the way bub, I was talking to the chick there not you, useless shit stain. Talking like that to her closest friend is not a smart way to flirt with her, as well as the other two mistakes you made with Kiba giving the older boy a look of confusion, Niji continued that shit stain is my little brother and he is a seal's macer. Kiba gave them an yeah right look and just pushed Naruto's side, so are you gonna go out with me? Kiba just signed his death certificate and was too stupid to realize it, although when he felt a hand on his shoulder, finding out it was Naruto who was bugging him what? You gonna tell me she is your girlfriend? You ain't nothing compared to me, wimp, the alpha dog always gets what he deserves, and I am the alpha in our grade. Niji took several steps away as Hinata hid behind him, while Kiba smirks thinking he was scaring them, sadly when he looked at Naruto in the eyes, he was scared, they were so cold they made him shiver, how a seven-year-old was able to generate this much hate was a mystery to him, but Naruto was pissed off and he could tell. Naruto put a seal on Kiba's forehead when he recoiled from the glare he gave him, and with it Naruto walked away, grabbing Hinata's hand on the way, while Niji smirked and walked with him, but Kiba was getting mad about being brushed off, so he went to kill the blonde, but he was stuck and could not move his body at all, and so started to scream for help until Shino. The boy who saw no harm in helping just pulled the seal off his head and asked why he had the seal on him. Some blonde brat put it on me when I tried to get close to a girl he was hanging with, nothing special. Shino shrugged and went to class with Kiba following him trying to strike up a conversation, which led to Kiba believing Shino to be boring and somewhat creepy, and Shino to think Kiba was an idiot, nice friendship huh? 
as the two entered the class Kiba was confronted by Naruto if you ever go near Hina-chan again, I will put a seal on you that won't just make you hold still, it will eat away at you beginning with your manhood, needless to say Kiba hated Naruto and tried to go behind his back to flirt with Hinata, but found out they always hung out together, it was like trying to take a steak from a hungry lion. Painfully impossible. End of bad flashback. Shino showed interest in the female, and his insects informed him there was nothing wrong with the beautiful angelic virgin babe he saw. Yes his insects can tell if a girl is a virgin, it has something to do with pheromones and hormones and how they could sense them, like if the scent was too weak, they were a virgin, if it was strong, they weren't don't know if it's true, I am guessing, and no I don't care. Shikamaru was thinking it wouldn't be troublesome to get to know her, while Choji was drooling while looking at her, while he just dropped his bag of chips on his desk. Needless to say Naruto was surrounded by males the moment he or she walked into the room, although you could see a curious Hinata sitting in the back row, wondering why this new girl reminded her of her Naruto-kun, but stopped wondering when she saw an evil glint and a mischievous grin on the girl's face and knew who it was, or Atlas thought they were related somehow. But the joke the girl did made her blush like crazy. Naruto looked at the boys before holding her hand up to halt their speaking and said a simple statement that made all males blush and drool if you want to date me you gotta have at least two girlfriends the males and females were all shocked, even Hinata didn't expect that. And since the blonde was making her way towards her she was even more curious if this was her Naruto-kun or not until someone who shocked everyone spoke up and said something that added to the shock Ino and Sakura, you both are allowed to date me, and with two high-pitched squeals, Sasuke Chiha had two fangirls on his arms as he looked at the new blonde expecting something similar, but was shocked. Flashback again. The third day of the academy, two days after he helped Kiba get that seal off his head, and Kiba was staring down Naruto when he got a evil glint in his eyes and a fox-like grin, and it sent a shiver down his spine, and so he decided to ask his father something. Needless to say he feared the evil glint and fox-like grin when he was told about the trait from his father that the blonde shared with Kishina Yuzumaki, and also how Juri of the Sanin got the look once, and he couldn't move for three weeks without causing him pain in his manhood, he was bedridden, and Tsunade was happy for the entire time. And there were also no reports of perverts at the hot springs for a while, though this also explained why the Aburum told everyone that they can't see with their insects, just talk with them, which explained why the Aburum were never questioned about sneaking peeks at the wrong side of the hot springs, although the Hayuga were questioned several times. And poorly short flashback. Shino now knew that Naruto was just giving him a chance to be popular, and so, he took it and grabbed Naruto by the waist, pulling him or her into his lap, and whispered into his or her ear, I know who you really are, Naruto now the fun was going to begin. Easy tiger, if you want to go that fast, you would have to wait for when we got to my place, and now the boys were getting mad, especially a certain Acha. And so he went to grab the blonde from the bug boy, but before he could Aruka came in good morn. Who are you? Naruto had an even greater evil smile you don't recognize me, Iruka sensei Sasuke just figured he would go to the council after school and get them to make this girl his until. Naruto. Wats with the hinge. Many dreams were shattered in that instant, and many were almost crying, but one was too pissed off to think, and so he grabbed the female by the hair and pulled her off Shino's lap surprising everyone, and then proceeded to deliver a kick to her midsection, launching the girl into the wall. Dope. How dare you mess with an Achiha, I should kill you right now Sasuke was growling, and now was actually getting confused when he saw Naruto bleeding from his mouth, Naruto didn't bleed when he took a direct kick to his jaw in his last spar, actually he jumped up and launched a kick to his head, in short, it was hard to make him bleed, and Sasuke knew it took more than that. Diba so you're real girl till you get that ink and fix the seal. How long till you get the ink? The shop I go to to get it told me I had a week to wait, why? As Naruto asked this he was trying to stand, and as he fell a bit he was grabbed by Shino who helped him up. Hiba why you helping him Shino? He just played you into his joke, we should just take advantage of this and get revenge then Hinata will be mine. Shino I knew it was Naruto san the moment he sat on my desk, although I recognized him from his smile that he always had when he was gonna prank someone, and I even played along and informed him I knew it was him, and Naruto is my friend, why would I not help him? And technically since he is an actual girl now, it actually didn't feel weird to assist him, considering it was also humorous to see the looks on all of your faces when he was revealed to you all as the blonde knucklehead he is. Shino smiled at Naruto, and Naruto gave him a real smile back, Naruto knew Shino was a sport, he didn't like to get in trouble, and was an upstanding citizen and student, and thought logically, but he was willing to go along with a joke, though he wouldn't tattle on you, he would not break the rules, so Naruto was always willing to accept his support after a prank which normally gave him someone to talk to while he cleaned up his mess when Hinata couldn't, but this time it was just a joke against the other students, and they didn't break any rules, and wouldn't have been yelled at by anyone, maybe glared at for a bit, but nothing done to them from the adults. 
Hinata rushed over to her Naruto-kun, so all you need is that ink. Yeah, I need the ink so I can add a chakra filter and remove the chakra from a seal, so the henge will drop, I tried to make a henge that could hold even against the Dejutsu you and Sasuke have, but I didn't have the ink I needed to reverse the seal. So I went to get some and was told they were all out and they won't get any more till the end of the week, everyone noticed the misery in her his voice but none of them cared really, Sasuke was mad that he fell for the damn thing, Shikamaru just said troublesome and went back to sleep. Although he was a bit mad at Sasuke for acting like he did while Choji was angry with Sasuke as well but went back to eating, knowing he couldn't do anything, while Kiba was standing with Sasuke on this one and was glaring at the blonde he or she the bastard is a girl, yet he still gets Hinata, damn him. Iruka on the other hand had a plan to help alright Naruto, we will go on with the day normally, and at the end, I want you to stay with a friend till you get the ink, so no one will try to take advantage of a little girl who lives alone in the middle of the night alright. I will feel more comfortable if you had someone to watch over you and make sure you're safe, if you have nowhere to go you can come home with me, after Sasuke gets done with detention after school, for attacking a fellow classmate. Sasuke glared at Aruka who leveled a glare that dared him to refuse, in the end Aruka won, but it wasn't over, he would have his revenge. But either way, Sasuke got curious why would you care so much about Naruto anyways. Aruka looked at the Achiha before giving a simple reply I was an orphan when I was young, being alone is the greatest pain someone can ever deal with, some resort to hobbies to hide their pain, others try to get out of it, but no matter what, you can always see the pain, and having dealt with that pain before, then also considering our little prankster here has made many enemies. I would believe it is just too unsafe for Hai. Her. To be staying alone while he doesn't have the strength he is used to, imagine if you lost all of your power Sasuke. Naruto is vulnerable at this moment and someone could use this as a chance to cause him great pain. Suddenly something scary happened that is so youthful. Suddenly everyone was afraid as they saw a green muscular man with caterpillars as eyebrows, while crying and randomly hugging Aruka, well said sensei was freaking out trying to get away, I was walking by as I heard your youthful speech, and I have decided to comfort your youthful fires of youth, so you won't be alone. Everyone was afraid besides one girl boy who are you? What youthful flames, maybe you can pull of the youthful female flames of youth as he finished, he pulled out a green spandex weed and smiled while Naruto smiled right back doing his nice guy pose as he grabbed the spandex and spoke. My beautiful flames of youth need privacy to change into the youthful spandex, so when next we meet my youthful ally of youth, finishing with a feminine nice girl pose. I was proud he found a youthful lady, and so he left with saying you are very youthful young maiden, I hope to one day allow you to share a meal of youthful team lunch with our youthful teams, and with that he gave Aruka a nice guy pose and was out the window yelling youthfully youthful things of youth. As guy made his youthful exit, Hinata burst into a fit o oh giggles, I think you are the only person who can keep a straight face while talking with guy sensei and his youthful talks. What about Lee? Hinata I see him as either a clone or his son, I'm talking about someone who isn't a carbon copy of him, while well, Laruka got his senses back he was greeted with two giggling girls, and it didn't help that every boy in the room was trying to remind themselves that the blonde with the perfect figure was a guy, poor boys. Laruka maybe we should just continue on with our day besides all the stars and the weird looks Naruto's day seems like any other, and he had to deal with all the weird looks the full week, only having to threaten Kiba's manhood once, when he asked about what Imnad Hinata did at home, and if he could join them, needless to say, Kiba is still an idiot. Even though Naruto made the same joke the night before that, but Hinata enjoyed their sleepovers, it was like having a female friend, although they did have Tenten and Hanabi join them sometimes even both, but Hiashi was fine with it, considering they couldn't do anything perverted without him being a boy. So far everyone has passed and they are now calling back our favorite blonde, and no, I don't mean the loud fangirl platinum bitch. Naruto was just supposed to do a bunchin, and he was told it could be any type he could do, and so, he does our favorite hand seal that we all should know, and if you don't, then there will be questions raised, considering he uses this all the time, and summons 8 perfect clones. Naruka where did you learn something like the cage bunchin? Naruto I found a teacher willing to help me figure out the problem why I couldn't do normal bunchin. Aruka actually nodded his head and handed him the Hita band, if no one noticed, here's a secret, I never put Mizuki in cause I hate him and didn't want to go through the hole he stole the scroll, so I cheated. The next day. Aruka gives them his speech. Dot team 7 is Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasu canned. Naruto damn, I feel bad for whoever gets put on their team, Yuzumaki Naruto Naruto was ticked and now I feel like killing my team already, bet that's a new record. Sakura had to add her to sense why is that Baka on the same team as me and my Sasu kun. The teams were chosen by the third, or in this case the readers, you want to question him. Sakura became obedient. 
and as Aruka looked at Team 8, he lost all color in his face Team 9 is still in circulation from the previous year, everyone wondered why he skipped Team 8 Team 10 is Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, and Akamichi Choji, and Aruka was not able to escape before Naruto was right in front of him. So why is Hinata Shino and Kiba on the same team? It was calm and collected, but the chill everyone felt was frightening, they all knew what happened when you pissed him off I can handle being on Team 7, but why did the cage put Hinata on the Horndogs team? Aruka was starting to cry I'm just the messenger. It wasn't my choice. It was Hokage-sama. Don't hurt me. The grown man was actually crying and begging, why you may ask, it happened when Naruto and Hinata were 9. Flashback. The reason there are flashbacks is because no one sees a reason for making up a shitload of chapters dedicated to one little event, besides, time skips give people excuses to change part of the story when needed, or at least that my excuse. Biba was bored, and when he saw Hinata without Naruto he had an idea, he ran up to her to talk hey Hinata. Wanna go out on a date with me after school. Sorry Kiba, but I have plans. With Naruto. Just cancel them, I am way better to hang out with, besides, I might even show you a better time than that loser ever could Akamaru was worried about his partner. The little pooch knew how his master felt about finding mates, and no, he did not pluralize that by accident, Kiba wanted a woman who he could get to share him with other women, or he was just gonna cheat on Hinata when he convinced her to be his. Poor boy is delusional, but sadly Kiba was stupid enough to grab Hinata's ass, as he was flirting with her, and when she cried out pervert, things went to hell. Someone was waiting for Hinata at the next turn, which is where his and Hinata's paths cross on their way to the academy, and when he saw Kiba feel Hinata's ass then heard Hinata scream, hell froze, and he rushed Kiba, which Kiba tried to avoid but failed miserably, earning him a good punch to the jaw, while Akamaru whined and hid behind Hinata. With his tail between his legs and Kiba just stood back up, Naruto grabbed his head, and Kiba screamed about when Naruto squeezed, but before he could crush his skull, he threw him into a fence, the people watching were scared, none of them felt the Kaiubi's chakra which meant this was Naruto alone, but when Naruto grabbed his head and spoke it scared more than the adults, stay out of this. He is mine, I will punish him for what he did to my Hinata-chan without your help, fuzzball, and now the crowd was afraid, the boy could summon the fox's chakra to use in battle. Now they regretted attacking him, but when he grabbed Kiba by the ankle and lifted him up and pulled out a seal paper, Hinata knew she had to stop him before he killed the perverted idiot, Hinata ran and grabbed Naruto's hand and begged him. Please Naruto-kun, just let it go, he learned his lesson Naruto dropped Kiba on his head. Be thankful mutt, Hinata saved you for now, but touch her again, and I will not listen to her next time she asks me to spare you, I will just rip out your testicles and shove them down your throat at the end, Naruto focused Kaiubi's chakra to deepen his voice to sound evil, and from the looks he got, it worked, needless to say, no one touched Hinata, period. Though some who knew Naruto well enough, still touched her, but just something like a pat on the back or a handshake, although girls were the only ones brave enough to give Hinata hugs, they knew friend or not, Naruto would make good on his promise, so they decided to play it safe, cause being on Hinata's good side, put you on Naruto's good side, or at least the do not kill list. Then flashback, hope you like the Kiba bashing. Aruka had every right to be afraid, considering Naruto also got an invite to help with the prisoners one time from Anko and Ibiki, though the poor fools made the mistake by calling Hinata a whore, needless to say, they all obeyed after seeing what Naruto did to the man, having your testicles ripped off while red evil chakra seals the wound and shoves them down your throat. Leaving them alive while they were forced to eat them was beyond cruel, they even recorded it from multiple angles, then showed the display to other guys, which needless to say scared the shit out of them, and so the interrogators had less troubles. But Aruka was smart, Naruto hated Kiba with a passion, and would not trust him to take out his trash, when it was five feet from the bin and a mile from his home, thus explaining why Aruka tried to avoid saying who was on Team 8. Naruto, would you please bring your complaints to the Hokage and not get mad at me? Naruto turned his glare to a grinning Kiba, and Naruto pulled out a seal, making everyone back away from Kiba, and Akamaru was suddenly on Hinata's head, instead of Kiba's, and Kiba was sweating bullets, Naruka told them all to go to lunch, and then come back for their teachers to pick them up before Naruto could do anything to Kiba. And so Naruto grabbed Hinata and went straight to the Hokage's office, to stop the evil that his teammate from forming. The Evil One's Office. Naruto kicked the door in, surprising the Juanin in cage, who also knew of the boy's feet, but the killing intent was what scared most. Okage is something the matter Naruto. Naruto you know why I am here, is your intelligence fading with your youth. Tell me why Hinata is on the same team as the perverted mutt. The ninja present were scared, Naruto's eyes were slitted, and they knew he was pissed, it also didn't help when they were showed the video that Anko has up in a golden display case, when they were stupid enough to ask what it was, and it got worse when his right hand began to glow red, then every male including the cage grabbed their privates, Naruto started walking towards the cage, well. 
the Hokage Gulp 12 Team 8 is a tracker team, and Team 10 would be the Inoshika Cho Recreation the other teams all required to be put into teams that would make for frontline battle. Teams 8 and 10 were the only ones who could be put into specialized squads, if you think Kiba is that bad then do something about it, that does not involve killing the boy. Fine, but he will feel pain, and with that he took Hinata to lunch. Ibisu why did you allow him to even go that far? If I didn't he could have gone and released Kaiubi's wrath on us. That and he would probably take the glove he made me back every ninja sweated at first, then sweat dropped at the end. Three hours later. At the academy, there were five people waiting, and as a white-haired man walked into the room, he looked confused so I have five genins, and one is actually a chunin in disguise. Kuran I was sitting in Aruka's chair as she glared at the newcomer shut the hell up Kakashi, I am waiting for my third genin to come back, and according to these genin my third one is with yours. Well my first impression of my team is. I hate you that earned him a slap upside the head from Kuranai, but they were interrupted by the opening of the door, as they all turned to look at the late Genin, they all noticed a blush on Hinata, but Naruto seemed dead serious. The reason we are late is. The teams were expecting Naruto to give them a straight answer, we got lost on the route of life. Everyone face planted besides Kakashi well it is full of twists and turns, I myself get lost on it every now, and then Naruto smiled at the man, and my first impression of you? I like you Kakashi patted Hinata and Naruto on their head so wats with the red face. Naruto you will find out he pulled out a piece of paper and he walked over to Shino and Kiba and slapped the piece of paper on Kiba's head. What the fuck was that for dope? Kiba pulled the paper off him but then people saw that he now had a seal on his face. An anti-pervert seal the girls all surrounded Naruto waiting for him to explain and this is a sorta of like brother seal to it and with that he put a seal on Shino's face though he didn't slap him like he did Kiba and so he explained earlier I placed a seal on Hinata when Kiba is too close to Hinata his face will begin to burn and she will get a shiver where hers is also. The warmer the seal is the further you have to be away from her to keep your face burn free but the closer to her you are, the worse it will be, and it can get to the extent where it will burn your full body till you no longer breath, meaning if you try to peek in on her, you will have to deal with the extreme of extreme burns, and Shino's seal is a fail safe, if yours activates Kiba. So will Shino's everyone's eyes widen, so Shino has sentive to kick your ass and keep you in line, his won't burn his face off, but it will give him frostbite when you get close to Hinata, and before you ask, it has to be pretty damn cold, before you would be able to touch Hinata, without getting roasted Kakashi looked at the seal. I hope he doesn't have a seal that would stop Yuriya from getting his research done. Naruto handed a seal paper to Kuranai place the seal on your bare skin, it would be better if you placed it like on your chest or ass at this the guys looked at Naruto skeptically, but it will protect you from Kiba as well, Kuranai glared at the boy. Did you help Hinata put hers on? Naruto raised a brown O, oh, I haven't seen Hinata naked, I put the seal on the same type of paper you have there, on one side the seal is prominent, place that side on your skin, then add chakra, it will soak into your skin and become like a tattoo, and I made it with my blood, so the seals will stay on you till I die. Ain't that a bit overdoing it? Sakura was a bit skeptical about the whole, look at my woman you die thing, I mean, saying it was one thing, but Naruto is being literal, Kiba could die from those seals. Sasuke say if he is stupid enough to go after her after what the dope did to him last time, as well as the many times before that, then he deserves to get his face burnt off maybe, if I got my hands on one of them seals, then I could kill my brother. Naruto shrugged while well, Kuranai spoke well if we could put one of these on every pervert out there, including that bastard who writes that itch a itch a paradise smut, then the world would be better. The Kashi was almost crying you wouldn't do that, would you Naruto? Naruto closes his eyes with his hand on his chin, that depends on how much you're willing to pay me, Sensei Naruto had an evil grin, while looking at the white-haired and black-haired senseis, Kakashi spoke immediately. I will do whatever it takes to protect Icha Icha Paradise Kakashi had a flame in his eye that would make my guy proud. Kuranai well I would do anything to end it, she spoke with such anger towards Kakashi, it would make Anko proud. Naruto on the other hand was gonna milk it well then, how about a contest? When he got everybody looking at him he continued with all of you, I guess, can enter, winner gets a special seal, that I will work on, and you must be able to. Answer my riddle they all nodded including Hinata who was actually entering the end will be at the end of the week, here it is. Pronounced differently but spelled the same. I have many meanings from obscure to mundane. In a trip across water I get there before you. In precipitation amazing, a marvel to all you. One naming of me means to acknowledge the praise. I move fastest in music as the violin maestro plays. Thought to children of all ages, or trip up they would. I was also much favored by a notorious hood. What am I? Well good luck and with that Naruto grabbed Hinata's arm and began to walk out, but was stopped. We really should continue with team meetings huh? Kakashi was wanting to figure it out and to do that he had to deal with his team. 
We will be on the roof for when you all feel like joining us, and with that they all walk to the roof. Alright, since we are all here anyways, and I don't think we will be able to split up for now, we will all just introduce ourselves here, with the other team, as well as our own Kuren I wanted to get the damn seal, and she would go to the Hokage in order to get the answer, when this was over I will go, then Kakashi then we will start with his team, then mine, alright. My name is Yuuhi Kurenai, I like Jinjutsu, reading, hanging with my friends and fellow Junin, I also enjoy gardening, I hate perverts my hobbies are training, and proving women to be just as strong as men, and my dream is to one day rid the world of perverts, and make sure you all succeed in your dreams as well. Kakashi spoke in almost lazy tone my name is Hitaki Kakashi, I have plenty of things I like, and I don't specifically hate anything, my dreams for the future are. I have plenty of hobbies, next. Everyone glared at him my name is Haruno Sakura I like. Looks at Sasuke, my hobbies are. Looks at Sasuke, my dream for the future is. Looks at Sasuke shrieks when Kurenai ask dislikes Ino Pig and Naruto Baka. Ichiha Sasuke likes none, hates everything, no hobbies, and I have no dream but an ambition to kill a certain someone. Uzumaki Naruto Kurenai got a kick out of the fact it was Hinata who was speaking likes are Hinata, Raymon, and Seals, hates are the three minutes it takes to cook Raymon, and stuck up pricks, hobbies include inventing seals and gardening, and dreams for the future are to become Hokage and earn everyone's respect through hard work. Now Naruto spoke for Hinata Hai Uga Hinata, likes her family, and Naruto, hates those who looks down on others for no reasons, hobbies include pressing flowers and training, dreams for the future are to change the Hai Uga clan, and to marry a certain handsome blonde Hokage at this, he got a huge blush from Hinata, a few giggles from Kurenai, a scowl from Kiba and indifference from everyone else. Although Kakashi was a bit skeptic, considering he had a lovesick boy, that could probably make himself cry in the middle of the night like a little baby in its crib. But he also had an Avenger and a fangirl, though Naruto was a bit more reasonable, he was just making jokes at least, and he was late, that's always a good sign of sensei and student bonding when you have the same tendencies, and the fact that he might get some free seals didn't make him favor him at all. Shino decided to go next my name is Aburam Shino, I like insects, I hate people who kill insects mindlessly, my hobbies are collecting and cataloging insects, and my dreams are to one day make a great clan head and maybe catalog every insect of the world. And Yuzuka Kiba, I like dogs, favorite being Akimaru, and also like Hinata, I hate fleas and despise Naruto and seals, my hobbies are training and playing with Akimaru, and my dreams are to be able to become the best clan head my clan has ever had, and to win Hinata-chan from Naruto. Kurenai twitched as she heard Kakashi chuckle alright, teammate will meet me at training ground 8 tomorrow at 7, for an exam to see if you stay genin. And team 7 will be coming to training ground 7 tomorrow at 7 in the morning to do the same. Naruto grabbed Hinata and walked away Naruto, I am not done, I would also like to warn my team not to eat breakfast, for if you do, you will just throw it up, see ya, and with that he was gone in a puff of smoke. Don't be late team and Kurenai left, Naruto picked Hinata up bridal style and leaped off to home. Hokage office. Kurenai Hokage sama. He nodded for her to continue I would like to ask you a question. I already know what you're gonna ask me. The Kashi popped up by Kurenai you do? Yes, I do, Naruto sent a shadow clone to tell me of your game, and you're not allowed to get help either, or he will drop you from the game, but I do wish you both good luck. And with that they went home as well, when they were gone Suratobi smiled at the game, but he did want to play too, he already knew the answer, it's obviously simple, the answer is. Kiba was sitting with Shino while they waited for their third teammate and sensei, but Kiba was pissed when he noticed Naruto with Hinata walking towards them, Shino raised an eyebrow and asked what are you doing here Naruto-san. I won't leave Hinata till after your team's test as he said that Kurenai asked him a question from behind him without anyone knowing she was there making Kiba and Hinata jump. And why is that? She was disappointed when Naruto and Shino didn't jump. The Kashi will be late and I don't feel like allowing the Avenger to answer my riddle over and over till he gets it right, even though I will not allow any of you to answer till Friday, and with that Naruto went and sat next to a tree and pulled out a collar with a seal paper that he was working on the other day till he fell asleep. Shino was curious though, what's that seal Naruto-san? I'll show you later when it's done and with that Kurenai decided to just continue. Training ground 7-3 hours later. Sasuke was pissed, Sakura was pissed, Naruto and Kakashi were not there, explaining why they were pissed, then poof. Yo, sorry I'm late, but a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the long way around, but then I saw old lady stuck in a tree, well her cat was begging someone to help her, so as you see, I couldn't just walk away, I knew you would understand if I was a little late, both his students were looking at the cyclops like he was insane, then they were interrupted again. Sorry I am late, but my reasons aren't as good as helping an old lady out of a tree, 
but I did have to chase of a mutt who chased my vixen up a tree, Kiba growled, as he knew that the mutt pun was aimed at him, and Hinata blushed deeply, knowing she was the only one he ever called his, and I figured I would have to deal with guesses to the riddle which you would ignore me when I told you. You can't answer the riddle till Friday, so I will ignore you till then, and that includes you Uchiha. Sasuke grumbled that he was denied special treatment for his name, but now it was time for their test. Bakashi say, Kurinai. After he got her attention he continued why are you here? Naruto was watching our test, so we decided to venture with him and Hinata for the hell of it. Naruto smirked, he did his research, and now it was time to try out his new seal he made three weeks ago, but first hey Akamaru. Wanna try a new seal? Akamaru walked over to him as Kiba was panicking, but wasn't able to stop Naruto from putting the collar on his dog. What the fuck? Akamaru, why did you trust him? Because you are the one on his bad side not me, if it was gonna have negative effects, then he would ask for your help everyone looked at Akamaru, did he just talk? Shino so the seal allowed animals to talk. Wouldn't that take away something that the Inuzukas are special for? Considering they were the only ones able to talk with dogs. Not completely, some dogs can't communicate with us, cause their chakra isn't even close to that that our dogs trained to have, nin dogs have more chakra than normal dogs, so they can keep a connection with us, it allows them the extra brain function that allows speech, but with that seal, it allows their voice box to be safely translated, without the extra training. Or at least that's what it looks like Kiba shocked everyone. He is right, I don't know how, but he is right Naruto was wide-eyed, but he shrugged. Bakashi so, are we gonna do this? Or you all gonna quite and save me the trouble. Naruto raised his hand for Kakashi to shake wish me luck. Kakashi shrugged and took his hand, but no one noticed that a seal crawled up Kakashi's arm, and so Team 7 looked at Kakashi, while Team 8 went and sat down, Hinata sitting with Kurinai between her and Kiba. Alright Kakashi pulled out some bentos and an alarm clock, setting it and putting it on a stump the clock will go off at 12, although the whole good luck handshake was because of Naruto, I wish you all luck, although why shake hands, I do not know, but oh well, you have till noon to get a bell, and yes I know there is only two, if you want to stay a ninja, then you better get one. Pause the one who doesn't get one goes back to the academy, begin. And now Sasuke and Sakura ran and hid while Naruto pulled out a seal, activating it he went up in a poof of smoke, when the smoke was gone everyone was shocked, Naruto was now completely dressed like Kakashi, mask and tilted headband, even the same eye color, well, I hope this will be entertaining even his voice, when we shook hands, I placed a mimic seal on you. But the mimic seal I can mimic everything about you, well you live anyways Naruto went to lift the headband, but when he did all that was revealed was Kakashi's other eye, scar and all but no Sharingan, which surprised him, but then he eye smiled. Shall we get started then? Kakashi pulled his headband up revealing a Sharingan, shocking Sasuke and Naruto, the former taking a step back, this is why I was selected to be your sensei, if I fail you all Sasuke has to do is wait a year, then I would be forced to test his team again, and even if I didn't become his sensei, I am the only one who could train him to use the Sharingan. So when he unlocked his, the council would order me to privately tutor him, I hate playing favorites, but if you're gonna mimic me, I might be forced to not hold back. And with that both Kakashi and Naruto started going through hand signs, and as Naruto finished on the tiger seal, he revealed a seal on his left hand, putting his right hand to his mouth to use the great fireball jutsu Kakashi knew, he activated the seal on his left hand, launching a hurricane towards Kakashi, needless to say Kakashi's jutsu failed, and he had to run or get roasted by a combo jutsu. Well it seems you avoided my only win combo, damn. Kakashi just had to point something out, Naruto, you don't tell your enemy when you have run out of some. He was silenced as he had to dodge a water dragon that was powered with lightning how. My main element is wind, the seal I used was stored with my element, but there was only enough to use it once, but in this form I'm stuck with your element, lightning Kakashi's eyes widen, he tricked him, damn well then, you may have the Sharingan, but I have my seals Kakashi's face turned white. Well then, time to put up an actual fight and they rushed each other, Kakashi was sending his attacks as fast as he could, but what he noticed is Naruto fought like him in every way, as if he was fighting himself with a bit of a twist, then he realized something, he was not gonna win, period. Sasuke was pissed and wanted that seal, he wanted to take it and use it on his brother, then he could kick his ass easily, maybe even obtain his eyes without killing his best friend, Sakura just thought it would be a cooler seal if Sasuke used it. The mate were in awe, Naruto, a genin was standing toe to toe with Kakashi, it was pissing Kiba off, considering Naruto could basically copy without using something like the Sharingan, but what happened next shocked Kurinai the most, Naruto began to gather chakra in his right hand, then it began to rotate, and she only saw that technique once in her life. 
when she was on a joint team mission with Kakashi's squad when they were all genin. After the mission where Kakashi lost his third teammate, they needed a member to allow them a full team, and Kurinai's team volunteered, and Kakashi sensei used a orb of immense power to kill an entire group of rock nin in one blow. She was shocked at how powerful the man was. She even had a bit of a crush on him after that, but she knew it was a bit of a childhood fantasy, Shino was impressed, and Hinata was inwardly cheering for her love interest. Kakashi was afraid now, the boy who was mimicking him was actually mimicking all his jutsu, this seal was deadly and would be envied by even the Sharingan users, being able to know your opponent inside and out, but was soon fooled, Naruto reached into his weapons pouch and pulled out Icha Icha Paradise, volume 14, the same one he had, and started reading. As he tossed him away with a kick to the gut, Kakashi saw the flaw, the reason that seal would be bad is you could turn into them literally huh? Correct, in other words, I might actually start doing all this shit without aiming to, when I am not even you, meaning if I used it on an enemy, I would turn around and attack you, I may be able to say, steal a bloodline, but I would not be able to control myself, in your case, you are simply open pervert, so which means, I have stolen your jutsu. But now I will have a challenge of putting this damn book away, this is a very hard and complex seal. It took me 58 remakes to make it usable as he got curious looks from his sensei he answered, I know the shadow clone, and I put seals on them, which allows me to see if the seal needs to be fixed to where it doesn't backfire. Once a seal of mine turned the clone inside out, Kakashi imagined if the boy tried his seal on him instead of the clone, imagining yourself being turned inside out is not fun, shudder. And so Kakashi pulled out his book and covered his left eye, and so Naruto covered his eye out of Kakashi's habit, and so they walked to each other while reading, then the mock battle started, as they sent kicks out at each other, the target would just sidestep it and send one of their own, just to do the same, and it was annoying everyone else. Mainly the girls cause no matter what they never put the damn books down. Kakashi I am really starting to like this team Naruto had the ability to allow someone to fight themselves, guy would try everything to convince Naruto to allow him to do that, even kiss another guy, and that thought scared Kakashi. Naruto maybe we should end this. And they both put their books away and started making hand signs, ending with both grabbing their right wrists, as lightning began to form, they rushed each other and clashed, but Naruto parried Kakashi's Rikiri, like they were swords, but Naruto's never went out, suddenly Green Blur appeared and pulled Kakashi out of the way, then something horrible happened. That was of the utmost youthful battle I have ever seen. Kakashi was gonna cry, he was saved by him. Why couldn't he just be hit by Naruto's damn Rikiri? Then he wouldn't have to hear Guy yell about this and that, and youth I thought you were gonna have the Ichiha kid on your team Kakashi. Though when I heard the Rikiri technique I rushed right over, figuring you wouldn't use it on one of your students, but it seems you taught him how to use your own signature attack. Actually Guy, I never taught him anything, this was our test, which you ruined, but I do thank you for saving my life, having a Rikiri through my skull would not be fun. No I believe it wouldn't be, but I must ask. I, please, just go to the sidelines if you are that interested in watching Guy walked over to his team who were standing with teammate, and they all seated and watched all right then, but Kakashi was surprised to see Naruto walking over to sit with Hinata with a bell in one hand and back to his old self, which surprised team Guy, but Kurinai decided to explain it to them. It however surprised everyone when Niji already knew about it, but then Sasuke jumped from the bushes and rushed Kakashi, and as he launched a kick to Kakashi's face, Kakashi got a surprise when Sakura appeared out of nowhere and struck his ankles, and when a girl knows what in the book he reads, they get scary, and so Kakashi had to jump out of the way. But when he was met head on by a blue foot attached to an orange leg, he was shocked that Naruto decided to help his team out. Why are you helping dope? Because if we can't work together, then we are never gonna pass, I already proved I could take Kakashi on and win solo, but if we don't show we can work as a team, then we will be disbanded, but I will most likely be picked as an apprentice to someone, well you get stuck with Cyclops there, and with that Naruto pulled out both bells and tossed them to Sasuke and Sakura. Well, to save me trouble, and possibly my life, then you all pass, now I need a doctor, to make sure you didn't break my nose, I will meet you tomorrow, in order to begin missions, and with that Naruto went and invited Hinata over to his apartment to celebrate both them passing and becoming genin, and as they went to get stuff for the dinner, well everyone shrugged and went home. Team Guy didn't care cause they already passed their test, and the rest of Team 7 didn't care cause Sasuke was Sasuke, and Sakura was swooning over Sasuke, Shino didn't care cause it was none of his business, and had to drag Kibo away before he tried to hurt Naruto, making Hinata hate him, and getting himself killed by Naruto, Kurinai was happy Hinata was enjoying her life. And basically just got her first date, which she would drag out of her what happened the next day, while well, they did their girl talk, Kibo wanted Hinata to himself.
Teams 8 and 7 were in front of Naruto waiting for the answer to the riddle. Although Naruto didn't allow any more to enter and forbid outside help, Kurenai, Kakashi, Hinata, Sasuke and Kiba were in the running, and Kiba was the first to blurt out an answer. The answer is wood, when you cross the sea you use a boat, and wood rhymes with hood Kiba looked proud. That is the lamest answer anyone could come up with, I bet you weren't thinking with your head huh? Akamaru seemed to be picking on Kiba, but they still got along perfectly, just now, Akamaru was more of a brother, who always pointed out what you did wrong, and normally ended with Kiba almost crying, considering now everyone heard what Akamaru said. Bakashi pulled out his book and stepped back a bit while scratching his mask-covered nose, people looked at him with a raised eyebrow. I was gonna guess that now he looked sad. While everyone sweat dropped Hinata answered the riddle bow. Kiba looked confused what's a bow, and thus earning him a smack upside the head from their teacher. Naruto a bow can be pronounced to rhyme with either toe or cow, it is also what the front of a boot is called, and is also at the end of rainbow, and also, Robin Hood, is a thief who stole from the rich and gave to the poor, although that was a bit far back into the past, before ninja, or before people discovered how to use chakra, meaning not a whole lot of people now would know about it. But the bow is a ranged weapon that people called archers would use, instead of throwing kunai like we do now, they would load the bow, aim, and fire, the cheap bastards. Actually bows and crossbows are still used to this day as weapons for civilian armies to cover up for their lack of proficiency with throwing weapons. Saratobi that's not a bad amount of knowledge Naruto, but what does Hinata get for answering correctly? Naruto looked at Hinata name your price winner Hinata blushed and whispered something into Naruto's ear, I shall have it ready for you as soon as possible. And so, with the riddle answered, he walked home to complete his end of the bargain, Kurenai was happy that Kakashi didn't win, Kakashi was happy Kurenai didn't win, Sasuke was pissed he didn't win, and Kiba was pissed he got laughed at. A month later, cause I don't want to tell you about their missions, also suspend me telling you what Hinata asked for. Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura had just queued the damn cat, using a paralyzed seal Naruto made, which he took off when he gave the cat back to the fire demios, sp. Wife. Saratobi alright then, there are several more D-ranked missions that you can. Sasu can we please do a higher ranked mission? Have we not done enough damn D-ranks? Saratobi sighed alright, there is one here, you must guard a bridge builder to the land of waves. And so the door opens and a drunk walks in wats with the super brats. Didn't I hire ninja? Why are you giving me an emo, a pink neon sign, and an orange target? Naruto looked at the guy and just shrugged, Sasuke glared, and Sakura went to strangle the drunk, but Kakashi had grabbed the collar of her dress thing. All right everyone looked at the Hokage meet tomorrow morning at the south gate to leave. Imagine I told you Naruto went to tell Hinata about the mission, then went home to sleep. They all met up at the gate with no problems, and Kakashi was on time for once, but Naruto was late. And 12 minutes after they were supposed to meet, a blonde was walking towards them, red shirt with a kanji for nine, surrounded by nine foxtails with a fox head right below it, then he was also wearing a black jacket with pockets on the inside, each pocket had stacks of paper, with who knows what seals. Then he was also wearing black jeans with deck holsters that also had stacks of seal paper in them, Kakashi noticed a total of five on both sides of the jacket, but that was what he could see, he still had to wonder how many rows there were, then the six around his waist, three on each side, then there was a wide scroll on his lower back, it was as long as a summoning scroll. But it wasn't big like one, it looked like it was meant for one big seal, rather than the endless name slots a summoning scroll had. But he also had on black combat boots, not no for stealth, but he could let it pass due to it being an escort mission, not an assassination, though he could not hear the loud boots, no matter how hard he listened, the boy could have actually sneaked upon him, if he would just conceal his chakra. Sasuke just had to point something out you do realize you're later than Kakashi right? Hey, I was right on time today. Sakura actually you were 3.4 seconds late, well me and Sasuke-kun were here at the same time, and about 5 minutes early everyone looked at her what? Naruto can we just go? And so they were off, and no matter what Kakashi couldn't hear the normal sounds a steel tooth boot would make Naruto. Why are your boots silent? Silent seals, I made a seal that was able to put a soundproof barrier around my feet and put them on the top of the boots, I can walk right into enemy territory without them hearing me at all. Fascinating Naruto. Hey dope. When said dope looked where did you learn about seals? The scroll what scroll one I got from my dead father and my godfather who was your father and godfather. Bakashi was now curious you know who your father was. Who? I don't feel like telling either of you, ask Jai-san if you think you should know, and if he thinks you need to know, then he will tell you, but only if you need to know. Bakashi looked saddened, but Sasuke looked pissed off, Kakashi went to the back to sulk, not long after Kakashi was tied in a spiky chain thing and killed as the two ninja appeared behind Naruto they spoke to down. 
Sasu threw a shuriken to pin the chain to a tree, which was followed by a kunai to keep it there, but noticed two seal papers in front of him, which he recalled was the paralyzed seals Naruto used on the damn cat, and so he grabbed them and landed on the gauntlets, and proceeded to slap the seals onto the ninja's necks, as they just dropped to the ground, unable to move. Naruto seals with Sasuke's speed huh? Nice plan. Also, good job on guarding the client Sakura, but Mr. Tazuna needs to explain why missing Miss Nin are here, when they are normally closer to say, the mist, as that would also seem that they were close to wave, so why would they follow a bridge builder who was no threat and had nothing to do with them? Because they were hired to kill me by the man who is holding wave hostage and leaving the children to starve, using the women as slaves doing who knows what, and then torturing any man who stands up to him Tazuna was crying. Naruto I vote to continue, although I advise you reimburse us when you have the money, so you don't get Konoha pissed off. Kakashi was surprised so what are your two votes? Naruto answered are you an idiot Kakashi? Sasuke would agree because there are strong opponents ahead and he would never accept that I was braver than him and Sakura would follow Sasuke to hell, if he was gonna go there after getting a look from Sakura, he decided to cover his ass love makes people do crazy things she accepted the answer. Kakashi chuckled, well then, shall we go? And off they were, to face unknown enemies, until they got to the lake that separated them from Wave, and crossed on a boat that was conveniently placed where it was, and as they floated across the lake, they all got to know more about the situation in Wave, and then they docked on an abandoned dock, they continued through the woods until they were nearing a river, when get down. And Kakashi dragged Sakura and Tazuna down with him, and Sasuke dropped on his own, but Naruto bent backwards, crossing his arms as his head hit the ground as the giant sword flew right over him, and Team 7 looked at Naruto confused. Bakashi Naruto. Why didn't you just drop to the ground? Naruto snapped back to standing straight up. I have always wanted to try that, and as he finished he grinned. Debuza landed on his sword as it was lodged into a tree you know, now I wanna try that, I never thought of doing that as interesting, but now that you mention it, it would be kind of fun. It is, especially with the rush of air going right over you. Debuza almost grinned, this kid's smile was contagious, it actually scared him, the hidden girl with a mask, had no problem with it though, besides the fact that her face was hidden, but so was she. Bakashi's Abusa Mamachi, demon of the hidden mist, wanted for trying to murder the Mizukage, what do you want? That simple, I want the old man you seem to be guarding. And there we have a problem Kakashi lifted his headband, defend Tazuna at all costs you three, he is too powerful for you to handle, and so it goes canon, up to where Kakashi gets caught in the water prison run, forget about me. Naruto got a shit-eating grin on his face, and he opened his jacket, why should I? Now it's my turn to have fun when Naruto opened his jacket he activated every seal paper in it, and all of them took flight, and Naruto was hidden by a wall of paper, then in a poof of smoke, he was surrounded by an army of paper birds, with kunai beaks, Zabuza and Kakashi's eyes widen. And they both began to sweat these birds will chase down whatever I send them at, I just need to learn how to aim them properly, but they always say practice is perfect, and now the two Junin were gonna piss their pants, Naruto was gonna literally turn them into target practice. You wouldn't aim those at your teacher now would you? Not on purpose, but to save you, I must put you in harm's way Kakashi turned to Zabuza. Maybe if we call this a draw huh? And you return a week later to have a rematch. Zabuza looked at Kakashi. The twerp is bluffing, and so began the deadly game of tag, Zabuza was forced to release Kakashi, but then the two Junin were battling for their lives against uncountable enemies in the form of origami kunai, and what was worse, the birds kept getting back up, as if they were made of steel. Maybe the barrier seal was a bit overdoing it. When he got questioning looks he explained each one of those papers have three seals, one to allow them the kunai to stay attached, the second to allow them bird shape and targeting, then the third seals make them as hard as titanium, meaning, until their targets are dead, they are gonna hunt them till they are. And you can't even break them the rest of Team 7 stepped away from him, although as Kakashi and Zabuza were about to drop dead Naruto activated a seal in his pocket, making all the birds swarm around him and return to his pockets, I hate to waste my pretty birdies, maybe I should color them. Zabuza was leaning on Kakashi's shoulder we lived. Zabuza and Kakashi looked at each other and had tears in their eyes, they then hugged and cried on each other's shoulders they almost took away our manhood they were both hysterical, but wouldn't any man be after facing down a wall of sharp objects going after your privates? Both of them had cuts all over their clothes and were bleeding from several of them. They were going too fast for the Sharingan there were too many to block with my sword, Kakashi, your student is fucking nuts, I am gonna come back one week, you better make sure your student is right in his head dammit, and so, the demon of the bloody mist got the fuck away from the brat that almost made him a less of a man. Sasu Tazuna and Sakura gave exasperated expressions, all three decided that legendary Junins were completely insane, and Kakashi glared at Naruto Naruto, you do not sick your seals at your own comrade. 
Naruto but I won, against two legendary ninja Kakashi was flabbergasted, Naruto did beat him and Zabuza, well technically he did, it was his seals that did it, but still. Did you have to aim at me? Naruto just had that giant damnable grin on his face, as punishment for trying to end my manhood, you have to drag my unconscious body to Tazuna's by yourself, and with that, Kakashi collapsed on Naruto, with chakra exhaustion from using the Sharingan against Naruto's attack, and as so Naruto dropped him on the ground, grabbed his ankle, and dragged him to Tazuna's. Skipping the walk there, though they walked over several rocks on the way there. Kakashi woke up with rocks in his back, he was without his shirt, and a beautiful lady was pulling them out I must be dreaming, you are beautiful. Tsunane blushed well you are awake, but when I asked how you got so many rocks lodged into your back, they said the blonde boy dragged you here, but he seemed to be smiling about causing this much damage to you, but he also said that the black haired boy was gay, which then they started to fight and went to train, something about the ultimate technique. The Kashi just wanting to be pampered by the hot lady, stayed where he was asking her how his back looked, and she was only halfway done with getting the rocks out of his back, and needless to say, it was painful, but when she started to rub his back to make it feel better, he was getting happier and happier. In the woods. Sasuke was listening to Naruto explain his plan to him, about the ultimate technique, and the more he listened, the more he thought he was losing his mind, he was thinking that Naruto was right, and that this was an ultimate technique, to fight with, especially fangirls alright, fist we need a target. Sakura and as if by magic. Did you call Sasuke-kun? Sasuke looked at Naruto with a smirk as they both nodded, they made a hand sign yaoi no jutsu, and suddenly Sasuke and Naruto were covered in a cloud of smoke, and then they appeared in their boxers, their muscles were bare, and their pecs were revealed to her, and they were what women dreamed of having with their man, and then. Sasuke and Naruto walked right up to Sakura as she was red as a tomato, they both smirked at her, and they both hugged each other with her between them, Sasuke was hugging her from the front, while Naruto was behind her, and she fainted. Naruto and Sasuke went and cancelled the jutsu, and were dressed again. So as long as we are able to be exactly what the fangirls desire in a man's looks, they will faint and leave me alone. Naruto nodded well damn, why didn't I think of that? You are smarter than I though dope Naruto noticed it was just fun banter, so he let it slide, and they both smiled. Now if only you could harness the power of fangirls and tame it, then release the evil power upon your brother Sasuke had an evil smile that would make Orochimaru proud. That night at dinner, Naruto and Inari have their spat, it went like cannon, only with Naruto in his new outfit, and where Naruto and Haku meet out in the woods, does not happen due to the fact that Tsubusa retreated, not got killed by Haku, and I shall also skip the whole training thing. But the only thing different is how Sakura would stare and imagine Naruto and Sasuke doing the yaoi no jutsu again, and blushing every time she looked at them, as they both grinned back at her, which confused Kakashi. And to the bridge battle. In the morning when they woke up, Naruto refused to get up, and when Sasuke and Kakashi started hearing flapping, they ran out the door slamming it shut. Sakura walked by and asked them why they did that, she was answered when several kunai were stabbed through the door, Naruto did not feel like getting up, but what they didn't know was what was going through Naruto's head. Naruto's dream. Naruto was dreaming about when he was saved by Hiashi, but what he had to deal with was going through it, as if Hiashi never came to help, and the pain came back as if he was experiencing it all again, every hit, every stab and jutsu, then the glares from their eyes, and the look of the blood flowing from freshly opened wounds, and the suffering he was gonna be put through. But then the scene changes to what would happen if the kidnapper had gotten away with him, they would have been pissed that they got the wrong child, and then when they noticed that he was a Jinchuriki, he would have been tormented even worse, until they were able to use him as a puppet, and then send him after Konoha, but all his torment ended when he awoke to a scream. Downstairs. Naruto got up and grabbed his bird seals, then ran down and saw Tsunami being dragged off, while Inari ran after them and threatened them, and as Inari threw a rock at one of the samurai, a hole appeared in the man's chest, where his heart was, and then everyone thought Inari killed him, and the other thug ran at the boy, until his chest was slashed open and he was rendered dead. They then looked on as four birds flew over to the now wake blonde good job Inari, sometimes, to be a hero, you have to stall the enemy until your more powerful ally comes to help, but never lose that fire in your heart, because that is what will allow you to be able to go further than the ones ahead of you. The fires of potential shall always ignite in those who desire to search for them, and with that Naruto had tears in his eyes, may you grow into a man that would make your father proud, and one day, I hope to be able to fight you on equal ground, young grasshopper, and with that Naruto was off to the bridge, while Inari went to gather the reinforcements. At the bridge. Bakashi, Sasuke and Sakura with Tizuna arrived to see a group of workers sitting with bruises all over them at the edge of the bridge, one of them decided to tell them what happened some guy with a giant sword and a boy with a mask told us to get off the bridge, if we wanted to live fair enough, what person with half a mind wants to go against a guy with a giant sword? Before you say Naruto, I said half a mind. 
Bakashi you all stay here, you two Tazuna, Sakura, you stay here just in case someone gets by me and Sasuke, we don't wanna let these people get hurt with a nod from Sakura, the two men went to battle. When Zabuza heard footsteps, he randomly jumped behind the smaller boy is that insane blonde with you this time. When Kakashi shook his head Zabuza sighed in relief. Zabuza Sama was feeking out about how you were gonna have that kid send his little paper at us, and it was actually fun, I made an origami crane and put it next to his bed one night, and when he woke up, he screamed like a little girl you could hear Haku trying not to laugh. Sasuke only a woman would be so cruel to a guy after their manhood was threatened after getting a shrug from the obvious female. Zabuza forget what happened and let us get on with this. And Q cannon battles up to where Sasuke got caught in the dome of ice mirrors, Naruto decided to just walk right onto the bridge, and he saw that Sasuke needed help, and so decided to launch his own attack. As Naruto went to open his jacket to release his birds, he realized he wasn't wearing his jacket, oh fuck Kakashi and Zabuza sighed in relief, but soon realized they were enemies, and since there were no birds trying to neuter them, it was back to fighting each other, I must have forgot my birds at Tazuna's, after a stupefied stare down with Haku and Naruto. Haku jumps out of the mirror and attacks Sasuke, but Naruto somehow jumped in and blocked all the senbon. Haku how did you do that? Naruto and Sasuke were now behind a red barrier, as the mirror above them fell apart and soaked them, Haku was being cautious, after the show with all them damn birds, and now this, he was in an unknown territory, and he didn't want to be caught off guard. Sasuke Naruto so how long till the barrier falls? Until it runs out of chakra can you reverse it? Do you want to get incinerated? That barrier will roast you quicker than a snowball can melt in hell, Sasuke looked at Naruto, are you telling me we are just gonna sit in here and hope he is dumb enough to walk right into your barrier? Well we could. If this barrier was soundproof he can hear us. Naruto nods why didn't you tell me dope? I have been unnaturally in a good mood lately, completely random what are we supposed to do? Play cards Naruto pulls out a deck of cards to prove he meant it, and Sasuke and Haku both sweat drop. The sound of thousands of chirping birds rang throughout the bridge, birdies. Suddenly the barrier falls apart and two people head straight to the soundproof. Bakashi vs Abusa, after Zabikan got trapped and when Kakikan charged his Rikiri. Bakashi was charging straight at an immobile Zabuza, and both them cringed as they were reminded of all those damn birds Naruto sent after them. As Kakashi was gonna plunge the lightning blade into Zabuza, Haku jumped in front of him and was gonna take the hit, until Naruto punched Kakashi in the jaw, shocking everyone you made me think you grabbed my jacket and used my blade birds, it's not nice to trick people Kakashi was sweating, but it was all stopped as they heard clapping. Beto was standing with a hundred men around him, and Naruto's eye twitched, it seems the demon of the bloody mist was in fact a little imp, I should have just launched an all-out attack on Tazuna's house, then use his little daughter as a personal slave, maybe even take your bitch as well, and now Zabuza stood and faced Gato. You can insult me, you can threaten my life, but when you threaten to take my daughter and rape her, I will make you eat your own manhood. Naruto had a sick looking grin on his face as he started to leak red chakra, Sasuke, Sakura and Haku were wondering where this power came from, Kakashi was getting scared, and Zabuza was gonna tell the boy to back off, but when he saw Naruto grab the scroll he had, which he conveniently had, and unrolled it to reveal two storage seals. He slapped one and summoned a red Z-A-N-B-A-T-O-U think Zanza sword from Moroni Kenshin, that thing, with a strange seal at the base of the blade, Naruto rushed in as if the blade weighed nothing, he began hacking up all the thugs, and as he was about to be attacked from behind, Zabuza with his Zambatu, sliced the thug in half two demons fighting alongside each other, the demon of the bloody mist. And the demon of the bloody seals. I might try to get that title changed later, and so Naruto turned around and pointed his sword at them, and with a speed as Zambatu couldn't have, Naruto began to stab at them repeatedly Gatling Blade. And with that the thugs were all either sliced or stabbed in half, and without anyone worth fighting, it didn't take long before Naruto and Zabuza sliced Gato in fourths, they both heard applause, and turned to see Inari wearing Naruto's jacket with all its seals, and the rest of the town, and they were all armed to the teeth. Team 7 plus 2 were walking throughout the forest to Kanoha when they began to hear an awkward song being sung. The voice sounded male. I do not own the song. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Everybody in the car so come on. Let's ride to the liquor store around the corner. The boys say they want some gin and juice. But I really don't wanna. Beer bust like I had last week. I must stay deep cause talk is cheap. I like Angela, Pamela, Sandra and Rita. And as I continue I know they're gonna get sweeter. So what can I do, I really beg you my lord. The me is flirting, it's just like sport, anything fly. It's all good let me dump it, please set in the trumpet. The little bit of Monica in my life. The little bit of Erica by my side. The little bit of Rita is all I need. The little bit of Tina is what I see. The little bit of Sandra in the sun. The little bit of Mary all night long. The little bit of Jessica here I am. 
the little bit of you makes me your man. Sakura and Haku were appalled by the song, Zabuza and Kakashi however, were just bobbing their heads to it, while Naruto and Sasuke just seemed to be slowly stepping away from the two girls. Jump up and down, and move it all around. Shake your head to the sound. Put your hands on the ground. Take one step left, and one step right. And one to the front, and one to the side. Clap your hands once, clap your hands twice. And if it looks like this then you are doing right. The little bit of Monica in my life. The little bit of Erica by my side. The little bit of Rita is all I need. The little bit of Tina is what I see. The little bit of Sandra in the sun. The little bit of Mary all night long. The little bit of Jessica here I am. The little bit of you makes me your man. All of a sudden they see a guy about 18, with short fiery red hair, which seemed to look like he just got out of bed, red eyes, wearing red jeans, with a red belt as a silver cross, with a red tint, hanging from a small chain from it. He also wore a shirt that had short sleeves, but underneath it were long sleeves, the short sleeve shirt was red as the long sleeves were black, and there was a picture of a phoenix on the front, he also had three swords, all of them were attached to his belt, two on the right side and the last on his left. He was being chased by a female who had equally red hair, eyes, and a Kronos battle axe, look it up on Heavenly, and seeking to use it on the male, she wore a pair of red jeans, as well as a red shirt that just allowed her right shoulder to be shown, she looked about 14, and she also seemed to be pissed off, and the poor redhead male was her target. Who was still singing as he was dodging the girl's swings. The little bit of Monica in my life. The little bit of Erica by my side. The little bit of Rita is all I need. The little bit of Tina is what I see. The little bit of Sandra in the sun. The little bit of Mary all night long. The little bit of Jessica here I am. The little bit of you makes me your man. I do all to fall in love with a girl like you. You can't run and you can't hide. You and me gonna touch the sky. And as the male finished singing he allowed the female to hit him, which when he got a goose egg on his head, he regretted it, suddenly another male walked from the woods with pitch black eyes and hair, which went to his mid-back. He wore a white trench coat, with two straps that made an X over his chisel chest, there was a black shoulder guards on his shoulders, white bandages were covering his stomach, while well, he had white leather pants with white leather boots covered his feet, he also had three swords, two crossed on his back, and the third on his left hip he seemed about 20, maybe more. The Kashi tapped his shoulder, and when he looked at him he asked shouldn't you stop them? The dark-haired male raised an eyebrow, and after pulling out some earplugs asked you say something. Team 7 blinked as he jumped back to avoid being hit by the strange axe, which hasn't been seen used since before the second ninja war, and even then only non-ninja troops used them, but now they would be considered collector's items, it confused Kakashi and Zabuza greatly, and they were wondering why the girl was so primitive. Then the black-haired bot drew the sword from behind his right shoulder, and the girl jumped away from him, almost looking scared. Maybe you should stick with chasing me, cause if you have forgotten, Kavidian picked up some of Sensei's habits, one being sword skills, and another being ready for any challenge the redhead spoke, also introducing the black-haired teammate. Shut up Hiro, you inherited his carelessness. Maybe you forgot. The black-haired male spoke to the female Sensei killed over half an army with nothing more than a sword and shield, and it is thanks to him we are alive, Tessa, you shouldn't really speak about someone so powerful as if he were a bad influence, you might regret it when you meet him in the next life, besides, he was also my older brother. So I may have gotten my traits from someone else Piro and Tessa nod, then shivered, but were interrupted. Who are you? By Sasuke. Piro looked at him, nodded, then asked where is Konoha. Bakashi looked curious why do you want to go there? Hove answered and we seek to restart our clan, and we seek the only place that pride themselves on having powerful clans. The Kashi looked perplexed, but Sasuke had no problem saying something stupid, the Achiha clan is the strongest there is, you have no hope to outmatch us. If the Achiha clan was so powerful, then how did it get its ass handed to them on a silver platter in less than a night, hmm? Why Piro brewed that up Kavidian had no clue, but he was gonna stab him. Sasuke was mad if you clan is so powerful then prove it, fight me, the last of the Achiha, you low down useless commoner. Oh shit, Kakashi had to grab Sasuke and pull him back when the female's axe and a new hammer were slammed where he was standing, the hammer looked very deadly, it was massive, almost the size of the redhead male's torso, and considering the boy had a beer gut and muscle, it was pretty big, the handle was about 4 feet long, and a crimson red, just like the hammer which seemed to have one side flat with the other side going into a giant spike, on one hand, squishy, on the other hand. How do you describe having a giant spike get jammed down the top of your skull? Hero, why did you reveal your hammer? You idiot, we were supposed to ask directions, not try to kill them, what were you thinking? And Tessa, if you both haven't forgotten, until we find the rightful heir of the clan, I am the one who must accept all challenges made to the clan. 
Biro and Tessa glared at the Achiha, who looked shocked, then got angry, how dare they see him as so little, he was the great Achiha, then Kavidian hit the nail on the head. He is way too weak for you both to go at him with your signature weapons that was like cutting his pride down to nothing, and now he knew where to get power, the council will be able to help him. We are heading to Kanoha right now, maybe you should follow us. You could be escorted by the famous copycat ninja Hada Kakashi, so let's get going, and with that Sasuke gave a triumphant smirk, which was mirrored by Kavidian, only his was made of sharp black teeth, and adding the dark clouds forming in his eyes, turning them completely black, his was scarier. Also including that Piro and Tessa were cowering behind the other ninja didn't help one bit. Well shall we go? Kavidian's voice seemed to send chills down everyone's spine, he smiled happily as he began walking down the road away from Kanoha. The Kashi sweat dropped as he stopped him, Kanoha is the other way after nervously chuckling and walking faster in the right direction, Sasuke was thinking of rethinking his plan, the supposed leader, now seemed like an idiot, but then again, that grin he had earlier, made him keep telling himself, Kavidian will be forced to train me by the council, all I have to do is throw my name around. I know Naruto has some great seal ideas, but still, to control the power of fangirls is impossible, the fool will be killed. And with that the three new ninja joined Team 7 on their way home, while well, Kakashi kept a close eye on them. Saratobi was talking with Kavidian, Piro, and Tessa, well for some reason all three were a bit cautious around Naruto adding, the fact that they also avoided speaking of their last name, made him suspicious of them, so he sent Team 7 to show Zabuza and Haku around the village, which right then only consisted of Naruto Sakura and Kakashi, and now he was gonna get some answers. So you mind telling me your full story? Davidian stepped forward I shall tell you everything, we are originally from the land of waves, we are the last living Yuzumaki, and to explain why we have yet to say anything of it, is because we have found others pretending to be Yuzumaki, in order to obtain our blades, and until Naruto proves to us he is trustworthy, we shall not allow him the chance to test if he truly is in Yuzumaki. And I warn you, we are a threat to be reckoned with, so if you try anything then we shall leave and be your enemy, that is your only warning. Saratobi knew the powers these three must wield to survive this long on their own, so he had a brilliant plan alright, there is an exam coming up, and in it, you three shall enter under Kanoha's name, and you three shall be a team, some you may want to prepare, and may I wish you good luck, and as a bit of advice, I have a feeling that Kakashi will enter his team. So you could also watch Naruto and see how he does, if that is how you want to test him, also, if you and him do well, one of you may be able to test him personally, although I ask you not to kill him. Thank you, Hokage-sama, and I would assume this exam is to also test to see where we stand. Saratobi nodded to Kavidian then we shall prepare, and we shall get an apartment to rest as soon as possible, and as they say goodbye, they went to rest, while well, Saratobi smiled widely when they were gone, but the smile vanished when his two stupid advisors entered his office with their precious Acheha. The Haru Saratobi, it has come to our attention there are three ninja joining Kanoha, and we wish for them to train the Achiha Saratobi opened his window and yelled at the three, said ninja before they were able to get far, which to save time they just jumped up to the window, but when they looked inside, they knew what to expect, shall we take this to the council chambers? And so the long useless walk to the council room begins. As Kavidian, Piro and Tessa were looking at every member of the council, clan and civilian, as the hokage began. So why have you called this meeting? The Ashi spoke up we have called this meeting, so the civilians can argue with the three newcomers about training the Achiha, so do not bother adding us in this, this got nods and bored looks from the other clan heads, besides Shikaku, who was asleep, and the civilians who thought they were gonna get support from them glared. But Danzo spoke before anyone else could blow the situation out of his hands. We asked that you three teach the Achiha your techniques, and in return, you may join the village as ninja, and serve us. Kavidian stepped to Piro and held out his hand, and Piro handed him a sheathed sword, and Kavidian walked over to Sasuke as he pulled the sword from his waist, and spoke with a glare there are two ways that you can be trained by a Sasuke eyed the swords, and was just waiting to prove that the warrior in front of him was a fool the first, which is the easiest. Would be to draw either of these blades from their sheath, the way for us to train you would be to have a guardian sealed within you, so, which path do you choose? When Kavidian spoke of guardians and sealing, the first thing that came to the council's minds was Naruto and Jinchuriki, and the council were now worried that they would teach the demon, and they had to stop them, but if they said anything now, then the hokage would have them killed, so they shut up and hoped Sasuke could draw a blade. Their swords would be stupid if they refused me, and Sasuke was not helping himself, Cove had a very sly smirk on his face, as Sasuke grabbed the handles of both swords and began to pull, but as he pulled, his feet slipped forward and he fell on his ass, Cove raised an eyebrow, Tessa giggled, while Piro burst out into laughing, Cove shook Sasuke off the swords what are you doing? 
If me the damn swords Kavidi and tossed the sword he got from Piro back to him as he strapped it back to his waist. Cove strapped the sword he still held to his waist. Then he drew the one behind his right shoulder with his right hand and held it to Sasuke's neck. Then Kavidian's eyes turned pitch black and he grew dragon wings and Sasuke's eyes widened. Sasuke was looking death in the eyes and he was scared. Do not command me to do anything, you are not the rightful heir, so you have no power over the blades of wind and spirit, and as so, me nor my cousin can teach you, and this is your only warning, ask again, and I shall take it as a challenge to our clan from yours, and as such, you shall battle to the death with the current clan head. Me and so Sasuke was silent as a council member spoke up again, much to everyone's annoyance. If you ever wish to join our village, you will train the Acheha. Kavidian was not one to lose his temper easily, he was someone who was bad at jokes, with a good joke just coming out every now and then, he flirted with girls he had no chance to date, and he was one to give great advice to anyone who asked, but when someone thinks they can force him to obey, he listens to women for obvious reasons, he has killed men for less. Here is in Saratobi on the other hand, did not want bloodshed, so he had to stop the newcomer from murdering his council. Damn, who would have thought he would ever purposely save them? Miracles only happen round Christmas time, oh well. Maybe I should inform you that I already offered Cove Kun, Piro Kun, and Tessa Chan to test themselves in the Chunin exams, and if they did well, then I would instate them as Kanoha Ninja and rank them accordingly, and as you all know, I am in charge of the ninja in this village, and if you ever try to take my job from me again, I might just become blind for a day or two. And I might even lose my hearing for a bit, you never know what will happen to an old man like me, the fact that he said it all with a grandfatherly smile was far scarier than Kavidian's open threat, but the smile on Cove and Piro's faces may have been what scared them the most. And Cove added to the underhanded scare tactic come on Sasuke, come get lunch with us more smiles, and the council knew that Sasuke would die if they tried anything again, damn it. Ali. Naruto with Zabuza and Haku were walking around, and Naruto was showing them everything, he even took them up to the top of the Hokage mountain, and Haku commented on the great you, and Zabuza admitted to feeling relaxed, as they all just viewed the village from above, and Naruto pointed out that they should visit at sundown, but now they were walking to the Chirakus for some Raymon, but now. They had to save Konohamaru. Who do you think you are? And the dark clothed one was gonna hurt the poor boy, up till they noticed Naruto walk past Mogi and Yudin, while Zabuza and Haku watched to see how Naruto handled this, which was very amusing. Look wearing Amasewat. The only ones who probably caught it were Haku and Zabuza, but the said boy obviously couldn't understand. What? Naruto resisted laughing at the boy well congrats on coming out of the closet, Naruto pulled Konohamaru out of the boy's hand as he put a strap on the homo and tied it, and after he was done putting it on him, he let it reveal it saying, it was a pink strap of cloth that went from his left shoulder to his right hip. That said I am homo and damn proud of it of course it sorta drooped from his waist a bit, but Naruto had put binding seals on that thing, so as the unknown female Konohamaru core. As well as Zabuza and Haku, all after him, he was still trying to get it off, too bad he didn't know that the moment Naruto tied it, it was never gonna come off, it was stuck on him, poor boy, too bad Kankuro did not bring a spare jumpsuit, or whatever it was called. Kankuro that one word made both the unknown people stiffen, what is a homo? It means he likes to take it up the ass and more new voices, Naruto turned and saw Piro, Kavidian, Tessa, dragging Sasuke with them, and then there was the first voice that came from a redhead, but what no one seemed to realize was the sudden rise in temperature, as two girls blushed. He has the same kind of strength as my brother he has the same look in his eyes as Abusa needless to say, Gara seemed to be a little uncomfortable for unknown reasons he has power, and power is hot. Before any could act, Gara had two women on his arms, and he didn't have his sand armor on, for the reason he never expected to be attacked, but he felt unusually warm in his cheeks the moment he felt his arms being hugged, but he was confused by what he heard. Wow, I didn't know I would be sharing Kankuro looked at the redhead, then the brunette, and was shocked, his little brother was gonna be shared between two hot girls, damn it, the cold bastard was stealing his dream, but why wasn't the sand attacking the two girls? Tessa is wearing an amulet that blocks the demonic powers from affecting her, everyone looked at Kavidian our clan made it, anyone who gets near it, that is a Jinchuriki, will not be able to use the powers they get from being one, in Shukaku's case, you cannot use your sand, the sand sibs were in shock, if that necklace was able to block off Shukaku. Then Gara would actually be able to sleep if you survive my cousin, then I will fix your seal the sand sibs looked at him, then Kankuro and Tamari both looked at Gara. Tessa grabbed Haku and dragged them off to the hotel that she and her cousin and brother were staying at, knowing that Cove and Piro would go somewhere else, Naruto on the other hand, released Kankuro from the pink homo strap. 
I would not expect to see your brother tonight. My sis has always been curious about the male body. She has even asked me and Cove some personal questions. But the only answer we gave her was to go sleep with a guy and find out. Then after the morning when two women were coming out of my room, I got even more curious questions. They were innocent, but very personal. And actually a bit embarrassing. I mean who would answer her when she asked how do you screw two girls at once? Shadow clones. The answer came from Naruto, and Zabuza also answered with his own answer. There are plenty of clone jutsu someone could use. Really? I just used some toys, they are helpful when you have to entertain multiple guests, hehe. <laughs> Damari on the other hand, did not seem amused you're just a man slut, you bastard Piro just raised an eyebrow. Girls that point out the obvious tend to be a bit more fun than others Piro on the other hand, could not help but toy with a female. Water clones are easy going in, fire clones tend to make things hotter, lightning clones send a tingling feeling into the girl, earth clones tend to be very hard, and shadow clones are as if there was simply more of them, the wind clones are useless, and less women like to be tortured as they do it. Everyone looked at Kavidi and what? Sakura and Tamari both yelled you're both damned perverts. Hiro and Cove looked at each other, then turned back to the two females your point. Sakura walked to get something to eat with Tamari following, both mumbling about damn perverts and how they should kill them, little did they know, they would never be able to do anything to the four perverts called Naruto, Zabuza, Piro, and Kavidian. Time skip, the day of the exams. Naruto was happy, but a little disappointed, why? Because last night, he was told his team was signed up for the Chunin exams, and when he went to tell Hinata about it, he found out she was entering as well, and so he took her to celebrate, and after several, for Naruto, bowls of ramen, Naruto got Hinata to go to his apartment and watch some movies with him, and so while watching movies. Things went well, and he had ended the night in a makeout session, he finally kissed Hinata, which he was glad for, but after he kissed her, she jumped him and started making out with him, tongue and all. And so, he now has a spring in his step, which got him curious glances from his teammates, but they ignored it. The whole scene on the second floor happens, and so I skip to when Lee challenges Sasuke. Sasuke Chiha. Sasuke looked at the green-clad ninja and almost cringed at how terrible he looked, green spandex, caterpillars for eyebrows, he swears he saw one move and a bowl cut, he was about to comment when the dope spoke first. Bushy brows. Naruto-kun. Naruto seemed to be in a green spandex as well, and they were now hugging. Sakura was hiding behind Sasuke and shaking, well Sasuke himself wanted to pull out a kunai and end it, then something worse, out of nowhere, came a guy that looked like an older version of Lee, and he had tears in his eyes. Their youthful flames burned brightly, I am so proud and now, there were three guys hugging, leaving Sasuke and Sakura to faint, and now guy just had to have a solution. I have no idea why people faint around me, but I always carry a smelling salts with me just in case. Lee and Naruto at the same time your flames of youth are an inspiration to us all, sensei. And so Naruto and Lee followed a scared Sakura and a freaked out Sasuke to their destination, when they made it to the door Kakashi was waiting to greet them, but looked on in horror as he saw what Naruto was wearing, and he stuttered and almost ran away, but he managed to congratulate them. And then ran away, when Team 7 and Lee entered the room, there was a loud squeal, and Sasuke had trouble standing, but when he got his footing he was royally pissed off. Anata saw Lee and Naruto and decided to join them, but when she started to remove her jacket, her teammates were a bit surprised, their standing before them was something shocking, Hinata was wearing a green spandex like Lee's and Naruto's, but the shocker was, she made it look good, it hugged her skin, showing off her larger than average breasts and her slim figure. Adding in her nice round ass, then she ran over and hugged Naruto shouting out youth, Sakura and Ino began to get a twitch in their right eyes, which was followed by them looking down and actually checking how big their own chests were, which a lot of other girls did, older ones wondering how big they were when they were her age, but two Yuzumakis gained a blush, one of irritation. The other of embarrassment, and then a third Yuzumaki had a shit-eating grin on his face, while the last one just raised an eyebrow, I shall let you guess who is who, but one couldn't help but be an ass. Beautiful friends. Piro was now wearing a green spandex as well, how he got it. No one will ever know how about a youthful hug. Hinata and Naruto saw right through it, Lee on the other hand how youthful of you. And so Lee gave Piro a manly hug, too bad Piro wanted to stab him in the back. Piro, be serious Cove could not take any more irritation. Ino had a question though so who the hell are you three? What everyone noticed was the hidden leaf headbands they were wearing somewhere on their person, Piro had his on his belt, while Cove had his wrapped around the point where his sword sheaths crossed, and Tessa had hers around her neck. We are the new examiners Piro on the other hand, had to make up something to joke around with it is our job to see if you're able to take the exams or not, and with that tried to drag Eno off to an unknown room, and so Cove had to stop him, the bastard. 
We are here to take this damn test. The Hokage himself allowed us to enter. It is a test to see how well we are able to do. If we can show how good we are to him, he will decide if we join the village or not. Well that explains why I have never seen you before. And now a silver-haired guy walks up to the group my name is Kabuto. And who are you three? I am Tessa, this is Cove, and my brother's name is Piro. No surname? All three shake their heads fine. So now the warning, it is not wise for rookies to act out and act like little kids in a candy store. It could make more enemies than you want. Everyone looked around and saw that they were the center of attention. And when the audience raised their eyebrows, every one of the rookies looked at what was very curious. Naruto was bending back all the way till his head was touching the floor and Hinata was using him as a seat and the rookies raised in their eyebrows. Hiro on the other hand did the same thing behind Eno you want to see pretty lady. And Eno kicked the bastard, making him fall to the floor, and that's when Ibiki poofed into the room with a large group of Chunin Aori. Ibiki looked at Naruto and Hinata with a raised eyebrow nice. I would be careful who you do that in front of though, Anko would enjoy using you for the same thing, but either way, it's time to begin the first exams, alright everyone take a number and sit your asses down. Ibiki took an extra second to look curiously and almost cringed when he saw the four people in green spandex. And explaining what the first test is and the rules follows, and not even a second after he was done he heard snoring, and so everyone turns their heads to see a red-headed male actually sleeping in the back row, not even bothering to write anything on his test, and so Ibiki threw an eraser at him, which he just moved his head to the left and promptly dodged, and so. Ibiki threw another eraser at the boy, and the boy moved his head to the other side, now getting irritated, Ibiki picked up a chair and launched it at the boy, the boy kicked back in the chair he was sitting in, almost falling over, but as he fell, the chair flew over him, and he caught himself on the desk with his foot and promptly pulled himself back up to his original spot. And now Ibiki had a twitch in his right eye. Should I give you some assistance Ibiki-san? Ibiki looked at the boy with long black hair and white clothes, and with a nod, he would just watch the show what are you doing woman? put your clothes back on. And Ibiki was even more annoyed until everyone heard a very obvious idiot. What? Keep him off. The redhead jumped up in his seat, obviously wanting to see the naked chick, which was never there, the more scary thing is that he was in his normal clothes, how he was able to get his normal clothes on without anyone seeing is truly a shocker, several people had to do a double take. Pavidian, you bastard. Ibiki stomps his foot hard enough to shake the room. Alright, now that we're all amongst the living, let us get on with the test. And so the test went the same way in canon, and when Naruto gave his speech, Piro helped him out by shouting here here, and so the next test was gonna begin. When Piro finished drooling over the half-naked chick that just flew through the window. Until he had to stop a snake from biting his balls off. And so now, everyone was on their way to training area 44, the forest of death, as a hidden reptilian smile was licking its lips, ready to take a bite out of a special genin. Hiro had yet to learn his lesson about staring and drooling over women, and when that woman is able to neuter you with poisonous snakes, he likes her even more, talk about idiotic. Anko was actually losing her cool. You see, Anko has a thing for sweet, kind, and gentle guys, and Aruka fit the bill, he sympathized with her, but didn't pity her, he knew what she went through, with the whole no family thing, and he even offered her a meal every now and then when she was a chunin, and he even asked her for a hand with a class once. Although he was hit upside the head by several teachers, but when asked why he let her anywhere near the kids, his answer was everyone deserves a chance to prove where they stand, and you shouldn't judge Anko, just because she was Orochimaru's apprentice, it's not what power you have that makes you evil, it's how you use it, and Anko has used the power she got from Orochimaru as a Konohan in. She should be shown the respect she has earned, not be looked down on because who taught her what she knows Anko has liked Aruka ever since, of course she only overheard what he said, because she was gonna get revenge for what the teachers had said about her, but then, she just went home and thought about what Aruka said, and the more she thought of him, the more she fell in love. But the damn red-headed idiot was truly pissing her off, the damn boy didn't take a hint, even though she sent seven snakes after him so far, and he kept on staring at her ass, her breasts, Aruka was cute when he tries not to let his eyes wander, and ends up in a blush, but she knew Aruka just as much as Naruto did, the man always tried to be the best role model. It actually happened ever since he accidentally called Naruto his son, Naruto had disabled his pranks that day, 18 out of 20 no one saw till he took them out of the room, but he always was the nice guy, the perfect role model, and he even tried to adopt Naruto, but was denied, mainly cause somehow, he was so unfit to adopt a child, mainly they caught her inviting him to get some lunch. The poor bastard needed three different types of antidotes. She denied every accusation, and the Hokage seemed to not get the papers that stated she did it, even the one Anko signed saying she did it, which surprised her, but then again, the Hokage was a grandfather to the majority of the village. 
Hiro on the other hand was getting hungry, if you know what I mean, he saw a hot chick who wasn't afraid of showing off some skin, and he wanted her, he was thinking of ripping several people a new hole, in order to show her what he was made of. The Vedian on the other hand. Wanted to stab his cousin, the stupid bastard swatted the snake chick snake at him several times now, four out of the seven, but he couldn't kill him till the third test at least, damn it. Anko alright, area 44, the forest of death, it's time to weed out the little bitches, and so we can see who are the top dogs, the cheeriness in her voice, was probably because she was about to actually get rid of the damn redhead, and hope he gets killed alright, now that we're here, let me explain what you'll be doing, this is a survival training. You shall be surviving in the wilds with whatever you have right now, nothing more, and whatever you find in the forest, you will also have to survive against the giant beasts that live in the forest, as well as all the deadly insects, and even each other, that cheerful tune has yet to leave her voice, and it was scaring several rookies, Kiba, who has had his hood up hiding his face. Throughout the whole first test and the walkover, seemed to be getting irritated, and was tapping his foot, and was growling low in his throat, that is until, his hood was slowly pulled down, and what everyone saw, confused them, there was a strange design on his face, and it looked to be burnt into his face well, 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 look who has a battle scar already, so how did you get it? Gibba was sweating I was hit with some strange jutsu. And a very deadly and thick killer intent, spread across every single person there, even the hidden snake was having trouble keeping cool, but it also excited the snake. The only reason my seal would be burnt into your face would be if you tried to look at Hinata-chan, well she bathed in a hot spring, and Naruto looked pissed off, his eyes were fully red, even the whites were red, but his pupils were just black slits that went from the top of his eyes to the bottom, and it scared Kiba. And even Anko stepped away from the dog boy you better pray to whatever gods that exist in this universe, that we do not face one another, even his teeth were razor sharp, not just his canines, but every last one of them, and Kiba swore he saw his death flash before his eyes in multiple different ways, because, if we do, I will not show mercy. Naruto returned to normal, and then walked back to Hinata, but she slapped him upside his head did you have to go that far. You do realize he was hospitalized, right? Thanks to your seal, he was bleeding from his eyes, nose, and mouth, it almost killed him, and Shino couldn't use his insects for four days, your seals are extremely deadly, Naruto-kun, you almost murdered your own comrades, the stern tone was almost like watching a person berate their dog for taking a crap on the floor. And it was amusing to those who knew the two. Alright, now that Hinata is done berating her pet Snickers allow us to continue, first you all have to sign a waiver saying if you do get your dumb asses killed, it's not my fault, or Kano has for that matter, and so, everyone got a paper and now for the rules, to win, you must make it to the tower in the dead center of the forest, with both a heaven and earth scroll. If you are missing either or both, you get disqualified, you must also have all three members of your team, or you're disqualified, and, if at any time you open either scroll, you are disqualified, so the condition to get to the next round is, 1. Get the scroll you don't have, 2. Keep you and your team alive, and 3. Get to the tower, any questions? None. Bud and the genin took a hint and went to hand in their slips, as well as get their scrolls, then they all went to their gates, and about 10 minutes later, were led into the forest. 5 miles into the forest. The wind began to pick up around Team 7, and then out of nowhere, a giant hurricane blasted through the forest and blasted Naruto back about a full three miles, into a tree, after going through a different tree that was in the way. That hurt like hell, and then he got eaten by a 50-foot-long snake this is so wrong, on so many levels. Back with Sasuke and Sakura. What the hell? Where did that come from? Sakura was panicking, and it was getting on Sasuke's nerves. When the proctor said that we had to survive other teams, were you asleep? Sakura looked at Sasuke and twitched. And then Sakura did something shocking, she slapped Sasuke, Sasuke was flabbergasted, Sakura never slapped him if you have time to berate me Sasuke, then you have time to help me find Naruto, the Baka probably will be trying to come back here directly, so we just have to follow the trail that he left. Sasuke was looking at Sakura with wide eyes you hit me. He sounded shocked. And Sakura widened her eyes well yeah, I just got fed up with how you have been treating me, I'm sorry, but I couldn't handle you yelling at me again, and you could stand to be a bit nicer sometimes. And you could stand to be a bit rougher sometimes too, but I don't slap you do I? All of a sudden Sasuke and Sakura felt a killer intent and froze up, they only ever felt this when Naruto got pissed over someone doing something to Hinata, and Kyukan and Orochimaru entrance, up to where Sasuke is standing across from Orochimaru, sweating from trying to protect Sakura, until all of a sudden. Sasuke has a wall of birds protecting him from Orochimaru, and as the Sanin tries to touch the birds, he gets a cut on his hand, Sakura rushes to Sasuke to check on him, and the wall turns into a dome. 
but it seems my birdies are out of this battle the Sanin and Team 7 turn to see Naruto, standing with his Zanbato, in all its 10-foot glory, not counting the 4-foot handle, while Naruto also has the Heaven Scroll, Sasuke smirked and leaned on Sakura to rest a bit. Pick his ass dope. With pleasure, team. Ah, Naruto-kun. Are these birds yours? They are fascinating, maybe we can trade seal secrets, I can take you to a level this village will never allow you to go to. What level would that be? I already found seals for eternal life, and to keep me from dying this info shock team 7 and Orochimaru so tell me, what would you be able to teach me? I know jutsu that can bring back the dead, wouldn't you love to see your parents? You are foolish, no matter how hard you try, the dead will always be dead, the most you could do, would be to summon their spirits from the grave, which I might mention I also have done, and let me tell you, my parents are very proud of me, and now Rajamara was drooling, this boy had eternal life, he had the ability to learn from the dead, he could even keep himself from dying. This little genin had all the answers Orochimaru himself was looking for, he even spent the better part of his 60-some years alive, searching for the answers this boy claimed to have, and Orochimaru would not allow this boy to claim it. So, if this boy wouldn't join him, he would kill him, so Orochimaru summoned the Kusanagi. Last chance Naruto-kun, join me or die Naruto ready to Zanbato, and glared at the Sanin, and so, the battle began. Naruto brought his 10 feet of steel down towards Orochimaru, but didn't expect to hit him, and Naruto was right, but the branch was no longer there, and it wasn't falling to the ground, it was flying off to who knows where, as sawdust, but when Orochimaru stabbed at Naruto in order to kill him, he was caught off guard as Naruto pulled his giant sword back and parried the legendary sword. And the two jumped away from each other and landed on separate branches, and Naruto looked shocked at the fact that the sword the Sanin had cut through both the barrier seal and his sword, his barrier seal could be explained with the sword being made of chakra metal, but the fact that the sword was able to cut through his sharp seal was a shocker. No blade can be a chakra conductor and be that sharp, unless. The legendary blade Kusanagi. I am screwed. Of course you are Naruto-kun, I also have years of experience behind using my sword, and Naruto knew he was gonna lose, it all came down to one thing, how loud can the idiot be before he gets killed, Naruto knew if he made a big enough racket, he could get someone to get here, considering, there is no one who could use a jutsu that can destroy who knows how much of the forest, but then again. If Naruto was wrong, he would just have to distract the Sanin long enough to pull of his reverse summoning with Sasuke and Sakura, he just had to get to them before this legendary ass decided to become gay shiver. And so Naruto attached his Zanbato to his back, Naruto pulled out a seal and activated it, glowing blue, and with a poof, Naruto had nine tails and fox ears, this is an idea I got from a reviewer, but without the internet, I can't find out who, I shall give them credit when I find out who gave me the seal idea, Naruto then pulled out five seal papers, and once they were activated, they became birds, just like the one surrounding Sasuke and Sakura, only without the kunai, and then Naruto grabbed his sword from his back and jumped after Orochimaru, and Orochimaru looked at the seals he just saw being used, then he glared, readied Kusanagi, and jumped at Naruto, Naruto thrusted his Zanbato forward, several seals glowing. As well as the five birds began spinning around Naruto, in a pentagram shap the five points of the star, then spinning at equal speeds, Orochimaru's sword cut through Naruto's easily, but the Kusanagi got stuck when it reached the first seal, Naruto's nine tails lashed out and grabbed Orochimaru, and the five bird seals stabbed Orochimaru's wrists, ankles, and his collarbone, but as they hit. Orochimaru activated Kusanagi, and it extended and stabbed Naruto in the chest, and Orochimaru gave a twisted smile, but when Naruto smirked, Orochimaru looked at the birds in his body, and as they glowed blue, Orochimaru felt his body weaken. Thakra draining seals. Naruto nodded, and as Orochimaru glared, he finished extending his sword through Naruto's chest, as blood drained from Naruto's mouth, while he still smiled. Now, you can't fight your way out of here Orochimaru smirked and did something that would haunt Naruto's nightmares five-pronged seal and with that, Orochimaru jammed his left fingers into Naruto's stomach and Naruto fell on a branch as his extra limbs disappeared and his Zanbato stabbed into the tree branch right next to him and all the birds protecting Sasuke and Sakura fell to the ground. Reverting to the seal paper they were made of. And Orochimaru extended his neck and bit Sasuke, leaving the cursed mark on his neck and retreating and removing the damnable chakra draining birds from his body, but now he felt like he just got done using three consecutive A rank jutsu, then the one he actually used, damn that brat, now he had to retreat or die. Story branch OFF in other words, I'm gonna start another story that would start from this point in this story, but I am gonna take a different path with this story, well that story goes in a different direction, it's just a new idea I had for when I am having trouble with where I want to take the story. And I hope you all enjoy reading two different stories that in turn are the same story. About a day later. 
Sakura had one hell of a time getting Sasuke and Naruto someplace safe, Naruto needed medical attention she couldn't give, and something she didn't know about was wrong with Sasuke, needless to say, she felt useless, that is until. You know, if you're tired you could go to sleep, we'll keep an eye out for you Sakura was now on edge. And why would you help me? And she really didn't want to chat with the strange trio of the unknown sound village you're not even in the same village Q can in battle with the sound trio, up to where Sasuke wakes up and breaks Aku's arms. As Aku was panicking, Sasuke just froze up, Sasuke widened his eyes as he dodged a white blur, and then everyone saw Kavidian staring them down. What happened to Naruto? He went head to head with Orochimaru, and after causing him enough damage to force him to retreat, he was stabbed by a strange sword that was able to extend, I believe they said something about the legendary Kusanagi, and Sakura was willing to answer, if Sasuke was in his right mind, he would slap her upside the head. Cove was quite shocked, he knew that Naruto couldn't draw on his guardian's power, the only way to know how, was for him or Piro to have taught him, so Naruto stood his ground against a Sanin on his own two feet, Cove would only be half serious if he said he could fight a Sanin, fighting was one thing, winning on the other hand, Cove also had two legendary blades of his own. And then he also had full access to his guardian, Naruto stood toe to toe, without using any legendary weapon, and that was saying something. Kavidian walked right past the sound team, but when he went to pass Sasuke, Cove had to avoid being hit. Don't you dare ignore me. Your fake power is nothing compared to the power I possess, and with that, Kavidian slapped a hand on Sasuke's shoulder, and Sasuke grabbed his neck and started screaming, then Ino ran over to check on him, Sakura tried to stand up and stare down Kavidian. I won't let you hurt my team, and just as she finished, Kavidian was behind her, he picked her up by her shirt and tossed her towards the Ichiha. Cove bent over Naruto and scanned his body with a basic med jutsu, stabbed fully through with a blade coated in the poison of unmatched potency, impressive Cove placed his right pointer finger on Naruto's well-built stomach Sakura, had to remove his shirt to bandage the wound obviously, and a seal of unknown complexity appeared. Cove then made a few hand seals and tapped five points that were on the seal Kai, as Cove finished with what he did, Naruto began to smoke from several of the seals across his body, one seal that was surrounded by eight others, gave a burst of red chakra you alive dude. Naruto opened his eyes, and Sakura sighed in relief, Sasuke also let out a breath he didn't know he was holding, teams 9 and 10 were also relieved, until. What the hell? So what if the loser is alive, soon none of you will be Zaku was promptly shut up when he no longer had the joint that connected his jaw to his head, or maybe it was when he lost consciousness, depends on which came first, though where he stood, was now a standing Kavidian, and he looked irritated. Look, it's obvious we can't win in this fight, here, take our scroll, and I'll take my team and leave. Osu placed his scroll on the ground and picked up Kin, followed by Zaku. Wait. What did Orochimaru do to Sasuke-kun? I don't know, our mission was to kill the Achiha, nothing more, nothing less, and with that, the sound team was gone. I will be helping Team 7 to the tower. No need Naruto was already standing I'm fine, so as long as Sasuke can move, we can continue. Sasuke looked at Naruto almost in shock as the boy removed his bandages to just reveal a bloodstained, well-toned chest, also covered in strange seals, and as he saw a blush on Sakura's face, he almost felt jealous. Strange, but then again, he was becoming attracted to the girl. Well, as soon as you see what is in store for you in these exams, you will know why I shall follow you, I would not do this out of the kindness of my heart, I do this to keep an eye on you, I wish to see what your team is made of, and since you have both scrolls, and seem to be in good enough condition, allow me to see the extent of your skills, Cove stood there watching Team 7. And as they decided to move, Team 9 and 10 decided to follow, considering none of them trusted Kavidian, and they all knew he was no pushover, and so it was they all worked together if he tried anything, and so they made their way to the tower, with Team 10 a little resistant about it, but as they passed a team of Rain 9, Eno became happy as everyone found out they didn't have both scrolls. And so when they reached the tower, they were greeted by the other two members of Cove's team, Piro and Tessa. So how did it go? When Cove responded to Piro's question, the answer got each of the other three teams on edge. He was able to draw Rachimaru into a draw with him, and then after I fixed the seal, he was able to get back up, as if nothing happened. What? Piro seemed serious. So it was obviously a big deal, but a serious Piro almost made them all scared, that idiot was being serious, and it scared the poor rookies, and Team 9. Well it would seem we should finish this test what the Kanohanins would find out later, would be what shocks them more. It was Sasuke versus some random chakra sucker. Everyone sees the perverted pun there right. And Orochimaru noticed something seriously wrong, Kabuto mentioned the fact that the dark-haired warrior and teams 9 and 10 were with team 7 when he went to scout Sasuke and so was not able to obtain much data, and so when Sasuke activated his Sharingan, everyone who knew about Sasuke getting bit were very suspicious and on edge. 
Sasuke easily launched range defense after range offense, and the more Sasuke showed his skills, the more the adults seemed to all begin to wonder if Orochimaru was losing his touch, as well as bluff to Anko. And after several minutes of ranged fighting, Sasuke won, Orochimaru wanted to rip his hair out, and everyone was doubting Orochimaru's skills, a certain dark-haired seal's master already was calling him pathetic, when it came to seals at least. And through the cannon battles till, obviously. Tauji Akamichi, are you gonna get down here and fight, or are you gonna forfeit? The match was Chaoji Akamichi vs Niji Hayuga, and Chaoji was a bit scared, he didn't want to fight either Hinata or Niji, mainly cause they had the Byakugan, he didn't stand a chance. Hey Chaoji Naruto felt like cheering him up somehow you win, and I'll take you out for some barbecue Chaoji knew what Naruto was trying to do, they both knew he couldn't win, mostly due to Niji simply being better, but Naruto wanted to convince Chaoji to at least do his best, and so with a nod, Chaoji jumped into the arena. Again. As soon as the word was said Chaoji jumped up and turned into his giant ball, also pulling in his limbs and head yelling out for the BBQ. And with that Niji had to dodge, and after Chaoji hit the wall, he began to turn around for another bulldoze, Niji jumped at him and hit several tenketsu, leaving Chaoji to turn back into his normal self and fall on his ass. You should have continued spinning, then I wouldn't have seen your tenketsu Niji was declared the winner, and then Niji helped Chaoji up to the balcony. Everyone began to feel a chill run down their spines, as Kiba began to shiver, everyone turned to see a smile on Naruto's face that made them want to run, then, looking at the next matchup, they knew. Naruto Uzumaki vs Kiba in Yuzuka. God damn it. Kiba on the other hand was scared for his manhood, maybe cause after the whole peeping thing with Kiba, she took him to Anko to let him see the best interrogation video ever, as Anko herself put it. Flashback. Naruto was about 8 or 9, and he was walking behind Anko, as well as Ibiki. He was going to, as Anko put it, prove how hard his balls truly were. Whatever that meant. And when he entered the room he was led to, he was met with a guy strapped to a steel chair. What the hell? This is what you're using to get me to talk. This guy was now wondering who this kid's parents were, and so, he just figured that the purple-haired chick was his mother, and she wanted to teach him to be an interrogator just like her. This is Naruto Anko was more than happy to be cheerful, and wondering if the kid actually would do something like what he threatened Kiba with, so she just had to say the right thing he has a little cute girlfriend he is very protective of, and they are just so cute together. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her, wondering why she wanted him to meet this guy. I don't give a damn, the moment I get out of here and we take control of this place, I'm gonna rape both you and his little bitch, I. Anything he was gonna say was silenced as he saw a red chakra leaking from the boy, as the two interrogators ran from the room, Naruto's sleeves burned off, revealing strange seals, and then his arms began to bubble and form claws, the right claw flew at the man and grabbed his privates, as the man screamed bloody murder. But the screaming stopped when the man felt the claw jam itself into his mouth and leave something in there, then for unknown reasons, his mouth snapped shut and he couldn't open it, what he then saw was that the boy put a seal on his mouth, sealing his mouth shut, and the boy spoke. Speak no evil the man was panicking, there was no blood, but he could taste his unmentionables in his mouth I am sure you all know what they are. But for the sake of keeping this fiction rated teen, I shall not mention them, but just so you know, he shoved both meatballs and the noodle in his mouth. See no evil what the boy said, confused the man, until he felt his eyes being torn out by the same red chakra, he could smell the rotting flesh from where his eyes were, and then the little bit of blood that dripped out went up his nose, as he was breathing frantically through it feel glad. You are the first to be dealt with this method of interrogation Naruto jumped up and punched the man in the throat, and the man ended up swallowing. The man started hyperventilating, and Naruto spoke once more before the man heard no more hear no evil, and with that the red chakra ripped his ears off, sealing shut the areas, and Naruto just left him in pain and writhing in the steel chair, and when Anko patted him on the head and walked in, she had an evil smile on her face, live broadcasts to the other prisoners, as well as a recording. But she was even a bit grossed out at what the boy did. Though she was very proud of the boy for being able to hold in his temper day after day of someone trying to steal his girl from him, but after seeing how easy it was to piss the boy off. She thought she should give a warning about messing with Hinata to as many as she could, and when Kurenai came to her with Kiba and Kiba was insulting Naruto, she showed him the video. Then flashback. The look Naruto had was one of a predator about to get its meal, and Kakashi pulled Guy away to make a comment about a fox hunting a dog for a change. And they both chuckled a bit, and Naruto jumped into the arena, while Kiba was walking to the arena, until he got yelled at for taking too long by Piro, and something about a chicken walking to his fate, but he ignored it, and finally, Kiba was standing across from Naruto, but Kiba was trying to talk to himself and focus. Alright, seals can't be used in a fight, they require too much focus. So physically, I win, there is no way I can lose, especially with. Kiba looked at Akamaru and saw that he was just sitting there looking bored. 
Again and as those words left the proctor's mouth, Naruto opened his jacket and a girl screamed, looking at the balcony, everyone saw Kakashi cowering behind Sakura. Raising several questions. Where are my seal birds? Back where you used them to protect me and Sasuke. Alright. Naruto bit his thumb and ran it across a seal on his arm, but nothing happened. Where is my sword? It is where it was when it fell after Orochimaru destroyed it. Naruto seemed sad sometimes I wonder what it would be like if I was on Hinata's team. Hey. Naruto pulled off his jacket and his shirt was somehow gone. Revealing a six-pack that most men didn't have. Looks like it's Tajutsu. And so, the battle began, Naruto rushed Kiba at incredible speeds, and Kiba only had enough time to activate his man-beast mimicry, before being forced to dodge a fist, then a foot, which left a hole in the floor, and Kiba was looking at two Narutos, but when the bastard made them, he will never know, and then Kiba smelled more of them, as he looked at the tent surrounding him. And had to duck and jump around every single attack the bastard threw at him, which was the third hit that came at him while he was in the air, and now he was in the wall, and Naruto jumped at him, Naruto kicked Kiba in the stomach, then went poof, this happened again, again, and again, then the other Narutos just poofed away. As the real one picked Kiba out of his shell, and when Kiba fell to the floor unconscious the proctor called the match, and then Naruto dragged Kiba up the stairs, knowing he was causing Kiba more pain, and then Kiba was pulled from his hands by some medical nins to be checked, and Naruto went to his team, and looked at the next match up, and his eyes widened, and his jaw dropped. Anada Hayuga vs Kavidian Yuzumaki. The Kanohan nin looked shocked, and one had a bit of fear, would you want to fight an adult as a 12-year-old, she didn't stand a chance, and so, Kavidian and Hinata stood across from one another in the arena, and Naruto was still in shock, and he glared at Kavidian, why didn't any of them say anything? Did they even care they were related? Naruto wanted some answers. Why didn't you tell Naruto-kun you were related to him? Maybe because if he is related to us, then he will have to pass the test, in which I shall give him in the finals, when me and him face each other, Yuzumaki against Yuzumaki. You don't believe he is related to you? I do actually no one expected that. Then why? I will not accept him as the heir to the main branch if he cannot walk on his own two feet, I refuse to allow him to use the blades of spirit and wind till he proves himself worthy to me. The swords will only see the main branch heir as their rightful wielder, but all heirs have to go through a test to see if they are powerful enough to wield the blades, the one who trained, then tested me, was my older brother, the one who trained and tested Piro, was his father, and with Naruto, I don't know who trained him, but I shall test him, although he was already rewarded a guardian. I will just remove the restraint of using my guardian at this, everyone turned and looked at Naruto. What do you mean by guardian? If he wishes to tell you of what I mean, then it is his choice, but forget that for now, now it's time for your test. But test. Everyone was looking at Kavidian, wondering what he meant, everyone except his team anyways. If Naruto passes my test, you will be the one I test next to see if you're worthy of joining, so this just saves time. Begin. And with that Kavidian jumped at Hinata with his right fist cocked back, Hinata leaned backwards as Cove neared her, but she got kicked in her stomach, knocking her back several feet, and she stumbled to get back up. Just because someone prepares to attack with something, doesn't mean it's how they will attack. Hinata felt like she was being corrected, and when Kavidian got into a stance, she thought of something, as Kavidian began to leap at her, she rushed right at him and went to strike his tenketsu, hoping to be faster, what she didn't expect was for her target to disappear and reappear behind her, backhanding her to the side, as if she was some kind of pest. But she felt it harder than the first hit, and she had a giant red bruise on her cheek, this guy wasn't toying with her, he was just simply bored, this was like a little kid playing with a yo-yo, only she was easier to hit, though the yo-yo would be just as easy, she tried to use one before, and she has still not been able to get it to come back to her hand, though this was different. But she still hated that yo-yo, the first time she tried it, it hit her foot, Hanabi wouldn't stop laughing at her, Hinata was brought from her reminiscing by having to jump back from a drop kick that looks like it could kill her, and Hinata looked at her opponent and noticed that he just stared at her, showing no emotion at all, so, when Kavidian rushed again. Hinata threw her foot up at the last second, and after a grunt, Kavidian stepped back a bit, every guy wincing, and Pura rolling on the floor laughing. Kavidian stood holding his privates in pain, till he fell on his knees, still holding his balls. Why did you aim there? Hinata honestly didn't have an answer, but when Cove looked at her, his eyes were turning fully black, and as he stood up, he grabbed the blade over his left shoulder with his left hand and drew it quickly, the blade was beautiful, almost like it was shining seven colors at the same time, then it settled on the color pink, and he aimed it at Hinata. Kavidian. Everyone turned to see Piro shaking his head, and as Cove growled at the male, he sheathed his sword, but never stopped glaring at Hinata. 
The Vedian rushed at the girl again, this time a bit slower, but still threw a foot at her head, which Hinata rolled to the right to dodge, leaving the defenseless floor to take the hit, Hinata knew he was mad, and she needed more than the Byakugan, as well as her flexibility to win, if the male decided to draw his sword, then she was defenseless, so maybe he wouldn't mind sharing. Hinata dashed at the blade on the man's waist and got a hand on it, Cove never tried to stop her, and so the two were now staring down each other, one with a sheathed sword, the other with two swords on his back. Hinata swung the blade, and Cove raised an eyebrow as the sword glowed a second, and as well as a seal around Hinata's wrist, another glow from Naruto's wrist answered plenty, a soul bind seal, the next thing was a thud, as Cove was slammed in the face with a damn sheath. And maybe a couple of teeth cracking with how much Sasuke was actually grinding his teeth, but that's a memo for his dentist. Cove reached for the sword over his right shoulder, with his right hand, from now on, I'm just gonna assume you know he uses the sword over his right shoulder with his right hand, and the left one with his left hand, and drew a sword that seemed so black, it ate the light, Hanada's sword seemed to be releasing wind from its edge, and what seemed shocking was Kavidian was actually smirking. So it seems we already missed my little cousin's wedding everyone looked shocked, jaws dropping and everything, everyone looking at Naruto and or Hanada are looking back and forth, with Hanada almost going unconscious. WWWWWW what? Allow me to explain, the soul binding seal you both have on your wrists is what the Uzumaki used to bind two people by marriage. So by laws of the Uzumaki clan, you two are already married, Hinata was feeling a little woozy and was completely red, as well as Naruto, but Naruto was leaning on the railing. So? If Naruto is accepted into the Uzumaki clan. You both are stuck with Ichith. Kavidian had to think fast, considering his head was almost taken off, he ducked, barely avoiding the slice, Cove swore he saw his own eyes in Hinata's for a second, only, she had a very good reason to be taking this seriously, her boy was already married to her, and if both her and he passed this man's test, they were already married. And would not be able to be separated. Cove was beginning to regret telling this girl about the marriage laws of the Uzumaki, but since he did, he was gonna have to fight a lovesick woman, and he was gonna have to be a little less lazy, and so he parried the next attack and sent his foot in to drive Hinata back, but when she rushed in again, he jumped over her and brought his sword down. But she guarded against it and hit Cove in the side of his head with a sheath, she just got off the ground, standing up again, Hinata threw the sword at Cove, but when it hit, there was a cloud of dust, as the cloud cleared, Cove was seen with a black chest think Final Fantasy VII's Bahamut's chest, Kavidian looked at Hinata and smiled. Damn, it's been a while since I've been forced to use my guardian abilities in a real fight, Cove picked up a wind blade, but if it wasn't for Naruto, you would never had had the chance, so with this twist of fate, you are gonna be hurt badly, unless you surrender, and with those words, Kavidian rushed Hinata with both the chaos blade and the wind blade at the ready. Hinata was about to throw the sheath at Cove when just then, birds were heard, as well as several sounds of metal hitting metal. What everyone saw was Kakashi using the Chidori, holding off one sword, while the Proctor was holding the other off with his own sword, and some saw an almost admiring look at the swords, the kind you would see on Juria's face when he was looking at hot women, and Guy was standing on his hands while he held his legs, so they were blocking a sword, with each using his leg whites as gourds. Until Ko flicked his blades and knocked Guy back over Hinata, the Proctor's sword in half, and dispelled Kakashi's Jidori, and Hinata looked ready to defend herself, until the sheath was removed from her hands, and Kove sheathed the wind blade, as her reattached it to his side, and placed the Chaos Sword sword back in its rightful sheath. It seems I win, that is the result considering the Proctor, as well as several of the Junin interrupted us and helped her right. And with a nod from the Hokage, he just nodded and turned back to Hinata, don't lose that bravery, not everyone would run up to an unknown and an obviously much stronger opponent just to get one of his weapons that you don't stand much of a chance using. Just for you have a defense against his other weapons, it was careless, but a bit better advice, don't ever let go of the one you love, you will regret it dearly, your heart and spirit gives you strength and courage, and love is the ultimate reason to do anything. You lost someone didn't you? Another story, for another time, I might tell you though, but Naruto will have to pass my test first, and with that, the proctor made a memo to get a new sword, and Guy made a memo to get new whites, considering he felt lighter, and Kakashi just wanted a nap. Hinata took Cove's words to heart and actually thought of what she would do if she ever did lose Naruto, and so, when Hinata got back to her team, which was right next to Naruto's and Cove's was right next to his, and Naruto kept looking at the three other Uzumakis there, but what Hinata noticed was he was probably wanting some answers, maybe about any other Uzumakis that he didn't know about. Gara's and Lee's fight is the same, except at the end, where Gara heard a girl yell out his name and he blushes, remembering what that woman and the other one did to him, Alsi making him lose control of his sand and releasing the green boy and allowing him to back out without getting injured. Gira Uzumaki vs Dosu what the fuck is Lasnames. 
As the two nemesis stood facing each other, Dosu felt brave, as soon as they were told, Dosu ran right at Piro, pulling his melody fist back, ready to punch Piro's lights out, but when Piro rushed him with his left fist back, ready to punch, when they met in the center, they both punched, and when their fists met, Dosu's arm seemed to shrink. And when the melody arm fell on the floor leaving Dosu to look at his stub of an arm, and everyone wondered what the hell was on Piro's arm. Hove answered the unasked question Piro has as much strength as an ape, and when he doesn't hold back, he could beat two apes at the same time, in a arm wrestle match, in a fight. Poor apes. That was an accident damn it, let it go. Piro obviously did something to a couple of apes. But what? Hey ate alright. Since we are one person short, Tessa Uzumaki will have to deal with a roulette of the previous winners, and so the roulette began. Tessa Uzumaki vs Piro Uzumaki. Fuck you. The fact she hid behind Cove spoke how much she did not want to go through with it, Cove may have played with her, but Piro does not know the meaning of the word gentle, his fight five minutes ago being proof. There was no way she was gonna trust that bastard not to accidentally make her lose her arm, she didn't even trust him with her little pet she found and took care of. And one of them was a full-grown gator. Tells you how much she trusts him. And so the drawing came. Cove 2. Hero, 6. Naruto 1. Shino, 8. Ara, 9. Tamari, 3. Niji, 5. Henkuro, 7. Shikamaru, 4. Sasu, 10. Ibiki announced the results the matches are. Naruto Uzumaki vs. Kavidian Uzumaki. Tamari Subaku vs. Shikamaru Nara. Niji Hayuga vs. Pura Uzumaki. Henkuro Subaku vs. Shino Aburam. Ara Subaku vs. Sasu Kicheha. The Hokage took it from there now then, the tournament shall be next month, in that month time, you may rest and relax, or you may train and prepare yourself, whichever you choose, I wish you good luck. Naruto was looking at three Uzumakis, Kavidian, Piro, and Tessa. Why have you never tried to find me before? Kavidia was the spokesperson for their team. Because we didn't know you existed, up till we ran into each other on our way to Konoha. But why didn't you tell me then? We didn't trust you. Naruto scowled at that why. Hiro chose to answer this question would you trust someone you didn't know. You most likely would have not believed us or wanted proof that and if we told you then, your sensei would have had a reason to drag us to Konoha for answers rather than as guest to see the Hokage, who, by the way, knew. You told the old man. If him then why not me? You would have been distracted Kavidian, the voice of logic you would want to get to know us and you would allow that to cloud your judgment, now, do you want to take my test or not? Of course I'm gonna take it I refuse to be seen as weak to you, considering how weak you think I am now. We don't see you as weak, we just see you as what we have seen of you, and taking on a Sanin, that earned you some points, and so, we shall stay here, I will give you the test during the Chunin exams, and Piro will train you. What? Why not you? Or Tessa? I am your opponent, and I am also the current clan head, meaning, I have business, while Tessa has no experience with the legendary blades, and doesn't even have one, Piro on the other hand, has nothing but free time, your Hayuga friend will most likely prefer to fight the cage, rather than take him on, considering with the cage, he has a chance that he could live. But anyway, I have a long list of shit to do, so Piro. Make sure he has all four limbs, his blood is pumping, his heart is beating, and his brain is functional, as well as sending signals when the tournament comes around. Did I leave any other complication you can cause out? After Tessa and Piro shrugged, Cove sighed, just make sure the clock still has a life of its own when it comes time for the mouse to run up it, alright. Cove, he will be completely healthy when the tournament arrives, I swear it. Cove walks away with Tessa following. So how long does it take you to heal from fatal wounds? Hiro gave Naruto the two legendary blades of the main Uzumaki family, and with that, Naruto's trip to hell began. How many promises can you break in one day? Piro has broke about twelve before. Damn he is an ass. Different training ground. Cove stood there with the sand sibs, Haku, and Tessa. Alright. And so Cove fixes Gara's seal, Gara becomes able to sleep, Haku and Tessa tore. I mean love Gara some more, and Tamari and Kankuro go back to the hotel to sulk. Hokage office. Hokage sama. Yes. What is it Cove Kun? I would like to request the ape summoning contract from you. That contract is a family heirloom you know. My intel also notes, your son refuses to sign it, I request to have it used by the Light Branch family of the Uzumaki clan, our clan has found the dragon contract and the fox contract, but your family has the ape contract, and to have all three perfect matches, we need your ape contract, the only ones to have direct contact with the scroll, will be the heirs of the Light Branch head. I don't see why I can't allow you two on one condition. Davidian nodded name it. If a family member of mine were to wish to sign it, then you allow them to, and I shall allow your family to wield the power to summon the apes. 
I see no harm in it, a shared summoning of the ape contract is a small price to pay, we shall make a system, so your family will be able to come and sign, but mine won't be tricked, we shall sign them after the exams, and after Naruto passes my test. You seem confident he will. If he doesn't the first Tim, he will the second, or the third, or maybe after the 39th. He is as thick-headed as Piro. Well I wish you luck in the exams. One month later. Looking at the contestants, we have the Sand siblings, Gara, Kankuro, and Tamari, we got the Hayuga prodigy, Niji Hayuga, the shockingly lazy genius, Shikamaru Nara, the powerful bug user Shino Abiram, then there was the intimidating figure of Kavidian Yuzumaki, but there were three people missing. Several people were gonna be pissed off if they didn't show. Although several were simply worried at the moment. Sakura where are those two? We know they will be here, any second now, they will show up and surprise everyone with a big entrance. The proctor on the other hand had a different viewpoint alright then, everyone better do their best, considering how many of you decided to play hooky. Hero better make it here in time, or else. The shadows that seemed to cover the man were enough to get everyone to back away slowly. On top the cage box. The tall powerful man who was laying down, was drinking a green fizzy drink, and had some popcorn, he was eating and drinking, while waiting for the show to start. Back in the arena. The proctor was about to declare the start when suddenly the wind picked up, and as a crash was heard, there was a cloud of dust keeping everyone from seeing the cause, and as the dust cleared, everyone saw Piro and Naruto Uzumaki. Piro was squatting down with a lazy to bored expression on his face, while Naruto seemed completely tired. Sorry we're late, but Slopak here kept me waiting. You made me run all the way from the mountain range to here, starting when you woke me up at the crack of dawn, making me train till we left, you piece of shit. Suddenly Piro was hit in the back of the head by Kavidian. I told you not to overdo it. No, you said to make sure he was alive. The proctor got tired of their argument, so he just ignored them. Alright then, shall we begin the tournament already? And before you ask, anyone who does not show up in the arena when their name is called, they are disqualified. And so the tournament began with Naruto and Kavidian in the arena, both in their normal clothes, only, Naruto had the Yuzumaki blades on the side of his waist, and they were staring each other down. Begin. The moment the proctor spoke the word, Kavidian spoke. The first test, Jutsu, all Jutsu, Tai, Nin, and Gen, whatever you got, I want you to use it. Naruto rushed forward raising his foot, and when Cove raised his arms to block, whites were released, and they kept going, slamming right into Kavidian, sending him back a few feet, which resulted in Cove's right eye twitching. Cove retaliated before Naruto had time to put his foot down, and so, when Naruto saw a drop kick coming at his head, so when he went flying backwards, he was not shocked. Physically, you should be stronger, your speed won't save you all the time. Naruto ran up to Cove and tried to punch with his right hand, but Cove moved out of the way, as well as every single punch Naruto threw, Cove even went far enough to make it look like he was dancing, and Piro playing can't touch this was not helping, as Naruto threw a backhand punch, Cove dropped into a split and backflipped while throwing his legs up to kick Naruto in the face. But Naruto did a backflip as well, avoiding the attack, and so they went face to face in a fist fight, Naruto threw a punch, Cove blocked it, and threw a kick at Naruto's face, while Naruto moved out of the way, he sent a kick to Cove's gut, which was stopped by a raised knee, and as they kicked each other and sent the other away from them, Cove spoke again. Where are your jutsu? I know you have some ninjutsu. That's the type you are, I know you have some, what about your seals? Naruto pulled out a seal and activated, the effect of the seal released a giant wave of fire at Cove, which was stared at, while Cove focused chakra, did some hand signs, and held his hands out as a black ball formed, and as the fire dragon came closer, the black ball absorbed it, the ball became bigger, everyone was in shock, while one set of eyes seemed to be smirking. The ball was raised above Cove's head. When you face a powerful opponent, you have to be aware of what you throw at him, dark reverse jutsu. Suddenly, the fire that was launched at Cove soared through the air, and it was black, while Naruto slammed his hands into the ground, and a purple dome appeared just in time to block the attack. Interesting, how did that work? You're joking right? I use a certain amount of chakra for each seal, that barrier can block any jutsu, as long as I can match the amount of chakra the jutsu it blocks has, and so when your attack came at me, I figured you added chakra to it, so I just added more chakra to the seal, and activated the barrier, but you added a bit more than I thought, a little overkill huh? Actually, dark chakra is a bit more potent compared to normal chakra, and my guardian has endless supplies of dark chakra, so, allow us to continue, and dealing with your jutsu, I assume your seals can imitate any jutsu. As long as I have the type of chakra, for example, to be able to use a dark jutsu, like the one you did, you would have to charge one of my seals with it. Interesting, so you can steal other bloodlines even. As long as they charge a seal with that chakra, yeah, but I can't steal chakra, yet. 
Oh right, you passed the jutsu part, seeing as you obviously don't need or use jinjutsu, that in thanks to my guardian, I'm immune to them, so onto the swordsman test, draw your Yuzumaki blades. Both ninja drew their blades, Naruto rushed in first, but what happened shocked everyone, when Cove brought his sword down, it turned into a monstrous blade think nightmare soul caliber, from soul caliber, while the blade in his left hand became a 7 foot long katana. Isn't that a bit ridiculous? You trying to compensate for something. But one, but how are you gonna deal with the darkness? Naruto was shot back from a kick as Ko followed him, bringing the katana up and watching as Naruto blocked with a legendary blade of wind, but Naruto also watched as the other dark blade came down on him, which he solved by slashing the katana with a spirit blade, and seeing as Kove had a good enough grip that slashed threw Naruto out of danger, the ground on the other hand. Now had a giant gash, Naruto was sweating and was almost getting scared, Kove was taking him seriously and he was hoping he would screw around a bit, but now he knew if he wanted to live, he had to take things up a step. Stabbing the two Yuzumaki blades into the ground, Naruto pulled out a scroll and opened it, revealing nine storage seals, and as he added chakra, nine blades came out, Kove seeing something suspicious focused dark chakra, and as he did, he watched Naruto grow nine fox tails, while he grew a dragon tail, as well as two powerful dragon wings. Now, both were in half-demon forms, so this was gonna be very interesting. Or lead to a very big disaster. Naruto had 11 blades, one attached to each tail somehow, and then the two legendary blades he had in his hands, Kove had a thick dragon tail, which had spikes, and then his wings, Kove had experience, Naruto had numbers, which will win. Naruto ran a Kove, Kove rushed Naruto, and so, the battle began, Kove started things off by ducking and launching his tail at Naruto, who blocked by crossing the Yuzumaki blades, and then sent all nine blades from nine different directions, which were blocked by Kove's wings, and with a flap, Naruto was thrown back, and Kove rushed him, not letting up, and so. Naruto sent a surge of chakra to the spirit blade, which shockingly became a giant buster SWORD first Tsurugi, and we all know, the katana is the mass immune, Sephiroth and Cloud swords, which I do not own. Our ancestors were always at ends, they sealed their souls into swords, and so, when the wielder learns how to, their souls are released, hundreds of years ago, Sephiroth, the ultimate warrior, he was unbeatable, then Cloud came along, and fought him, our ancestors knew of this legend, which was lost over time, all besides the fact they were once here, the story dates back thousands of years. But our ancestors honored their power, by recreating their blades, then sealing their true forms. Hiro informed me of them too, one wanted to end the world, while the other wanted to save it, Sephiroth was demented. True, but it was not his state of mind we respected, it was his swordsmanship, he was at the top, the best of the best, and swordsmen always honor one another, no matter if they are the enemy or your friend. Hove's first flashback. Standing across from a 5 foot tall Kove Cove by the way, is 7 feet tall in the present time, Piro is 6 and a half, with shorter hair was a tall giant, he stood about 9 feet, and was a titan of a man. It does not depend on how powerful or honorable a warrior is, it does not depend on whose side they are on, when two warriors meet in battle, they should honor the skills of their opponent, you should show them respect for the power they have earned, no matter how obtained, all power is earned, and you should show them how much you honor them by not holding back, anything less is an insult. When you fight an enemy, you fight to kill, anything less than all out, will be an insult. What about the hidden summons you wanted to go hunt? Would you use them against your opponent when you find them? If they earn it, but that power would be a little overkill you know, besides, with your fantastic knowledge, skill and power, how will you ever top me? The man with perfect power, skill and knowledge. By obtaining that same level of skill power and knowledge you have. The tall man looked at Cove and raised an eyebrow. How? I shall earn everything there is to know about power, and with that knowledge, I shall gain skill through experience, and then I shall make sure you know my version of your own personal jutsu. Then flashback. There is no true way to know when to not hold back and make things as amusing as possible, I guess that's what he wanted me to learn, how to loosen up, I guess I never was able to use it cue I was always too serious. What? Nothing, just the past coming back to haunt me. On a certain building, there was a giant smile on a certain man's face. Shall we continue? Naruto jumped up and launched a surprisingly smart attack, using the buster sword as a shield, he started having all nine of his tails repeatedly rain down stabs, which Kove was diverting, and he also noticed each were coated in wind chakra, protecting them from being destroyed by Kove's blades, as well as his tail, and Kove was almost being pushed to his limits. When he yelled out something shocking. Ninjutsu passed. With a spin, all of Naruto's blades were thrown off course, while Naruto expected to just land and go all out, he was shocked when he was blasted away by black flames. Looking up from his lying position, he saw Kavidian with a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. Guardian Control Test. 
The word shocked everyone, and when Kavitian undid his belt and let his jacket fall to the ground, a pillar of smoke rose from the ground, enough to shock even Guy and Lee, and considering Kavitian never took that coat off, they all wondered how much that boy was holding back, and when Naruto just let his vest fall to the ground, which did nothing, and then Naruto began to grow fur. Kavitian was revealed from the smoke, and when he was fully revealed, everyone was in shock, there standing before them was a half-dragon, Cove stood about 12 feet tall had about 5 feet of tail, and his wingspan was about 14 feet, his clawed feet and hands looked painful, his muscles were ridiculous, and he also had 4 horns, 2 on each side of his head. All 4 pointing forward, the ones on the top bent upwards near the end, and the bottom ones bent downwards, this guy didn't have bazookas for arms, he had cannons, plain and simple, he was powerful looking, and scary, his rows upon rows of sharp black teeth were completely deadly, and the fact he breathed out black flames was just shocking, then everyone looked at Naruto. Naruto had grown to about a simple 10 feet tall, he had 9 tails, and he had huge muscles, just about the size of Kavitian, Naruto was a fox-human hybrid and had just as sharp teeth, only his were white and shiny. And so, the battle of titans began, fox versus dragon. End of chapter. I was thinking of doing a new fiction, one about sending both my Naruto's I created and putting them into canon, what do you think? Would it work, does it sound interesting? Oh well, have fun. Joke man. Naruto rushed forward and threw a fist at Kavitian, and Kavitian grabbed it, and then Cove's tail came around and tried to stab Naruto, which was also grabbed, but then Kavitian flew into the air with Naruto, and Naruto tried to get off by having his tails attack Cove's wings, and Cove responded by launching them both back to Earth when they got about 50 feet into the air, which was fast. Due to the power behind Cove's dragon wings, the fact things were elevating to this level was a first in the Chunin exams, no genin waited till they were cage level to enter these damn exams, why would thess bastards? And so when Naruto was about to hit ground, he bit Cove, which was not a very bright idea, and neither was Cove biting Naruto, and so, when both hit the ground, everyone saw Naruto nursing a sore jaw, while Cove was spiting out fur. This will most likely get us nowhere, let this test end with the strongest attack in your arsenal. Kavitian would rather save his energy so he could enjoy watching idiots beat on each other, rather than rest in some damn hospital, and he honestly hated the taste of fur, who wouldn't? Naruto started charging up red chakra at his mouth, while black flames started to surround Kavitian, and when Naruto opened his mouth, a red beam came out, while when Cove opened his, a black thunder dragon came out, when the attacks connected, there was an explosion. So it seems the test ends here. Naruto was back to normal, while Kavitian was still in his half-dragon form. How are you still a dragon? I am powerful enough to pull off the black lightning dragon eight times in this form, and matching the power of one was your test, Naruto-sama. And with that, Kavitian returned to normal, I shall accept you as the rightful heir, but I warn you, as a member of your council, I will not allow you to soil our name, so if you marry any other woman than that Hinata chick who already passed my test, then I shall be the one to administer the boot to your ass as you leave the clan and pass your title to whomever is next in line, Proctor. I forfeit. Kavitian walked from the arena, and Naruto looked shocked and then smiled. Well cousin, I hope we will be able to have a rematch someday. Page box. The Kazakiage was sitting next to the Hokage, and they were deep in conversation about the power behind the Uzumaki clan. And the Kazakiage was secretly drooling, he wanted that power, he needed that power, so he would go and ask the Kavitian boy about joining him later. On top of cage box. You should have said you were coming, I would have made the show more entertaining. You think I would ever be entertained by some weakling like you? I learned your technique didn't I? I told you to get your own. You know I told you I was gonna learn to copy yours, and as you said, I would never be able to use it properly without a base element, which we both know I don't have, but I have now learned how to do it, proving you wrong, don't worry though, I will only show you in our next training spar. You were actually a bit gentle with him, that or you have gotten weaker since I last saw you, that black lightning dragon was not even close to your most powerful jutsu, so why say it was? The snake is near, we need our energy, and I can't go wasting it on these fights that would only weaken us, you sense the tainted chakra of the snake as well, and I assume that's why you're here right? His only answer was a nod, and so Kavidian left and rejoined the others, and everyone was shocked to see he had his jacket back on, and both his swords were in their sheaths. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.